can support us completed novel house in link below clip. Thank you for coming and love the sharing story chapter 1081, the clown takes off his mask. Flowing time gasped. Different expressions were shifting and running across King of Oddity's face. When Life Fantasia from the Clown's World was recited, a lot of people felt as though their sweat glands had suddenly exploded. This was a poem they had never heard before. It was such a ridiculously good poem that many people became very engrossed in listening to it. However, the reason for their shock was not because of how good this poem was. What shocked them was totally unrelated to this poem's literary and artistic standards. It was because this poem had suddenly reminded them of someone. At this moment, everyone watching on TV and those at the venue all thought of one man. Zhang Xia said anxiously, is he? Amy said, surely that can't be, right? Yao Jinsai said, holy shit. Chen Guang stared with wide eyes and said, that's impossible. Xiao Dong also shouted in astonishment, it can't possibly be him. It's absolutely impossible. No one believed that the clown could be that man. Who are you? Just who are you? The music suddenly started playing gently. The title of the song was already displayed on the teleprompter screen, I am what I am one. When everyone saw this, they were stunned. I am what I am. The clown smiled as he walked around the stage barefoot. Standing at center stage barefoot, it felt very cooling and comfortable. The pajamas he had on gave him a very relaxed sense of unparalleled coziness. It was as though all his disguises and burdens had suddenly been dropped and he could finally get back to being himself again in front of everyone. It was such a good feeling. Ever since he was banned, he had never felt so happy. Being secretive? Hiding here and there? This was not actually something he enjoyed. He wished to stand in the light and sing to the entire world. This was the real him. This was who he really was. The clown lifted his microphone. He started singing softly. Happiness is that there's more than one way to be happy. The greatest blessing is that everyone is the pride of the creator. The platform below him started to rise. Bit by bit, it took Zhong Yi higher. One meter. Five meters. Eight meters. Before long, the clown was standing at the highest point in the venue, 10 meters up in the air where he could see everyone. Dressed in his pajamas and standing barefoot, he sang loudly as though he had seemingly forgotten himself. There's no need to hide. I live for the life I appreciate. No need for a disguised side. In the bright corner I'll wait. The audience was stunned when they heard. Xiao Dong, Fan Wenli, and the others were also stunned. No hiding? No disguising? Waiting in a bright corner? You! You! At this moment, the clown suddenly raised his hand and ripped off his mask. Flinging it, the mask flew outward. A face that shocked everyone was exposed on screen. The eldest young sister shouted, Ah! His second sister screamed. His third sister's mouth was hanging there like she had forgotten how to scream. Ha Chichi, who was in the audience, was dumbfounded. Jongzhuo was dumbfounded. Spinach looked at him in shock. Han Chi was dumbfounded as she sat there unable to move. It's you. Why is it you? How could it possibly be you? At this moment, the venue erupted. At this moment, everyone watching on TV went crazy. This was really crazy. Looking at that very familiar face, everyone went insane. The clown suddenly exploded with a high note. Who am I? You're all still asking who I am? I'm not anyone else. Lose the honorific. The surname is Zhong. He screamed as he looked up and pointed to his chest and sang loudly. I am what I am. A firework of different colors. The broad sky and open seas. I'll be the strongest bubble as I please. I like what I am. May the wild rose blossom at ease. Even in a lonely desert, blooming in plain sight, unhurt. Banning? Censoring? Criticizing me? Insulting me? Bullying me? It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter at all. Even if there is only one person looking at me, even if there isn't a single person left. 
I still won't retreat and let this world change me. I am what I am. No matter where I go, I am what I am. Like that stubborn wild rose that blooms in the desert. Can you all understand that? Can you all see that? In the audience, his mother suddenly cried as she pointed at the stage and shouted, That's my son. My son. His father also teared up a little. So earlier, when the clown had said that his parents were here too, he was actually referring to them. His mother was choking back her tears. It hasn't been easy for little Yi. It really hasn't been easy at all. His third sister shouted, Brother. The eldest young sister and second sister were also so excited that they were unable to get a hold of themselves. Currently, all of the audience's reactions were similar to theirs. Shock. Enthrallment. Astonishment. Disbelief. It was Zhong Yi. The clown was actually Zhong Yi. The clown laughed. He laughed without restraint. How happy I am, enjoying life in a glass house. He pointed to the sky and sang loudly. And telling the world. What it's like to be bright and open. A sustained note made the entire audience stand up. Screams. Applause. Everything else was drowned out in an instant. A lot of people were crying. A lot of people were shocked. The man who insisted on singing when he had nearly fainted on the stage due to a fever during the first episode, that was Zhong Yi. The man who sang, The International, with anger when he was faced with censorship from several television associations, that was Zhong Yi. At this moment, many of the clown songs floated uninhibited into the minds of the audience. I am a beautiful, beautiful wild rose. Hating the heavens for being unfair. I'm ugly, but I am so tender. Arise. Ye prisoners of starvation. Tis the final conflict. You only see the brightest of stars in the starry night sky. Zhong Xia cried out, it's little Zhong. Xiaodong shouted, oh my god. Zhong Yuanqi was the first person to guess that the clown might have been Zhong Yi. But when she saw the clown take off his mask and the face behind it, she still found it unbelievable. Dong Shanshan was dumbfounded. High up in the air. The clown pointed at himself. I am what I am. A firework of different colors. The broad sky and open seas. I'll be the strongest bubble as I please. I like what I am. May the wild rose blossom at ease. Even in a lonely desert, blooming in plain sight, unhurt. It was too shocking. This song had turned the theater upside down. This song was written with Zhong Yi in mind. Every single word was about him. Many of the audience members were waving their arms and screaming for Zhong Yi. Countless viewers watching TV were shouting and yelling in shock and going crazy for Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi closed his eyes. He lowered his voice. Even in a lonely desert, blooming in plain sight, unhurt. The entire audience stood up. It was as if everyone had agreed beforehand that they should stand up in unison. Hanchi covered her mouth and cried. She had already lost count of the number of times she had cried today. It was really touching. She was captivated by his unique charm. So much so that she couldn't free herself. Hanchi suddenly raised her hands and shouted, John Yi! John Yi! In an instant, cheers erupted throughout the venue. A female audience member shouted in tears, John Yi! A male audience member bellowed, John Yi! John Yi! John Yi! John Yi! John Yi! John Yi! The audience had gone out of control. The audience had gone insane. This night belonged to the clown. This night belonged to John Yi. Chapter 1082, A National Sensation. At Old RAO's house. The live broadcast of King of Masked Singers was showing on the television. Yang Xu, sitting on the sofa, was staring with her mouth agape. RAO I mean was stunned. Chen Chen was also so shocked that her jaw had fallen to the floor. Yang Xu said, Th this is my senior bro. At Peking University. It was almost summer break. The teachers from the Chinese department were having a dinner party. When I Am What I Am was performed on television in the restaurant's private room, when the clown who was on screen suddenly ripped off his mask, the entire room fell silent. 
before the song was finished, no one moved their chopsticks. Everyone looked like they had seen a ghost as they kept staring straight at the television. Zhong Yi? It's Professor Zhong. How could the clown turn out to be him? Damn. At the SARFT. In Old Wu's office. Secretary Bai Li pushed open the door and came into the room. Chief Wu, something has happened. What's the matter? Wu Ziqing was working overtime to handle some documentation work. When she heard Bai Li, she did not even look up as she continued writing something calmly with her head lowered. Bai Li said in horror, Zhong Yi is on TV. Only then did Wu Ziqing slowly look up. Oh. Bai Li said anxiously. Take a quick look at King of Masked Singers. Wu Ziqing picked up the remote control and immediately turned on the television. The figure of Zhong Yi appeared on screen. Then Wu Ziqing laughed. Okay, I see. But Bai Li could not laugh at all, because Zhong Yi was currently on the ban list. As the tone had been set long ago, these people were supposed to be restricted from appearing on screen for a certain amount of time. But who could have expected teacher Zhong Yi to take on another persona and appear on the most popular, currently running variety show while hiding behind a mask? Further, he revealed himself during the live broadcast. This was something that no one had expected at all. At an entertainment company. Fang Weihong stared at the television in shock. A lot of her surrounding colleagues were also stunned. Today, they were waiting for the clown to take off his mask and were discussing whether they would be able to poach him to their company. The proposal was already written and the offer had been decided on as well. All that was left was for the clown to reveal his true self. As long as they knew who he was, they could find and approach him. But when Zhong Yi's face appeared behind the mask, their office fell silent. Silence. Then, Fang Weihong threw the proposal straight into the trash can and said, there's no need to try to poach him anymore. Since it is him, there would be no talent agency that could ever poach him even if he was a free agent. Her colleagues gave bitter smiles as they knew that their proposal was written in vain. It was Zhong Yi? The clown hecking turned out to be Zhong Yi? Oh my god! What's happening with this world? They felt as though that this world had gone crazy in this moment. On television, the live audience was screaming in excitement. On Weibo, the reactions were about the same as well. A fan club that had kept a low profile ever since their idol went silent suddenly came alive and appeared again. This fan club that had previously made people tremble in fright countless times in the entertainment industry was called, John Yi's fan club. John Yi. It's teacher Zhong. Oh my god. Comrades, so teacher Zhong did not disappear after all. Heck, when did our old Zhong pick up singing? I'm so surprised. This is so hecking surprising. How could it be Zhong Yi? God damn it. I'm so shocked. Is this for real? Is this really happening? I love you to death, teacher Zhong. I've been wondering why the clown's bad temper felt so familiar. I should have known. He even admitted defeat just so that he could eliminate Li Yu. How many people like him are there in the entertainment industry who dare to fall out and pick a fight with someone like that? I've only been a braindead fan of two people in my entire life. One is Zhong Yi and the other is the clown. In the end the two of them are actually the same person. Can you guys imagine the shock? Can you? This is too unbelievable. Teacher Zhong, I love you to death. You're fantastic. You're really fantastic. The acting leader of Zhong Yi's fan club, Big Saber Bro, who had disappeared for a long time, suddenly appeared again. Big Saber Bro, my large saber is again 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 unable to endure the thirst. Brothers and sisters. Follow my lead. In an instant, Li Yu's and Flowing Time's Weibo were filled with condemning voices. Previously, they had not known about the clown's identity. But now that they knew who he was, they definitely had to seek an explanation about the issue from back then. If they did not receive one, then they would scold them until they gave one. Elsewhere. Many netizens were shocked by what they were seeing. Heck! Zhong Yi's fan club has been revived. They've started their insulting again. These people are hecking warriors just like Zhong Yi. Ha 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 ha, I haven't witnessed such a sight in such a long time. 
it feels pretty nostalgic to me. Yeah, an entertainment circle without the presence of Zhong Yi's fan club is definitely incomplete. After such a long time without seeing them banding together for something, I really do miss them. This Zhong Yi is amazing. I thought that teacher Zhong didn't know how to sing. Was he just pretending in the past? How devious of him. He's way too devious. That's right, I've never before seen someone as awful as him. But it's really such a nice song. I've realized that I've also become a braindead fan of Zhong Yi's. What should I do? At the King of Masked Singers venue. The song ended. The live broadcast was still ongoing. The entire venue was still going crazy. Thousands of audience members began chanting Zhong Yi's name in unison as the atmosphere reached its climax. There was no way to calm them down. Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi. Champion. Champion. The live broadcast was coming to an end. Dong Shanshan was not feeling any calmer than the audience. She raised her microphone and said loudly with a smile, Thank you, everyone. With Teacher Clown's song over, the King of Masked Singers' grand finals has come to a perfect ending. Tell me, do you guys still wish to watch and listen to these teachers' performances again? The audience shouted, Yes. 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 Dong Shanshan announced loudly, if so, I would like to send out an invitation to everyone on behalf of Beijing Television and the King of Masked Singers program team. King of Masked Singers will be holding a live concert next Saturday night. Contestants like The Clown, Petal Shower, Sunset Glow, Flowing Time, King of Oddity, and Spinach, whom you all like so much, will be appearing at the live concert. Then, I welcome everyone to join us for the event. At that time, let us witness the glory together. There was still more? There was still going to be an episode showing the live concert? When the audience heard, they became exceedingly excited. John Yi. John Yi. Fan Wenli. Liao Ichi. Everyone was madly shouting the names of the contestants they liked. Counting down, 3, 2, 1. The live broadcast signal was shut off. The night of the King of Masked Singers finale had officially come to an end. Zhong Yi, who had just gotten off from the stage, was immediately surrounded. Yao Jinsai chided him with a laugh, you sure are good. Little Zhong. Why didn't you tell me you joined the competition? You're a real puzzle. A riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma. Zhong Yi felt a little embarrassed. Ahem. Fan Wenli smiled and said, Director Zhong, it's been a while. Zhong Yi was amused and said, it hasn't been that long. We meet each other every week. Chen Guang asked with great surprise, were all the songs that you sang on stage written by you? Yes. Zhong Yi grinned and said, please excuse my poor writing. Zhong Xia pointed at him and said, you're just great. I never expected that it would be you. You even pretended to be a Northeasterner? Pretended to be a Hong Konger? And even pretended to be Hokkien? Zhong Yi said awkwardly, Grandma Zhong, that was because I didn't dare to reveal myself. The air pollution documentary problem hasn't been dealt with yet. I'm still banned, unlike all of you. At this moment, Dong Shanshan suddenly rushed down from the stage to question him. You, Dong Shanshan shouted at him loudly. Zhong Yi rubbed his nose. Yo, if it isn't Teacher Shanshan. Dong Shanshan pointed at him and said, when I called you that one time, I asked you if you were the clown. You even denied it back then and swore that you were not him, didn't you? Zhong Yi smiled sheepishly. Did I? I've forgotten already. Li Xiaoxian laughed and said, was that song of yours really dedicated to teacher Shanshan? Xiao Dong exclaimed, didn't they explain it online? That Shanshan's birthday was not on that day? Zhong Yi laughed and said, we've been classmates for so many years and were even seated in front and behind of each other, so how could I not know when her birthday is? Her recorded date of birth on her household register is the wrong date. Dong Shanshan rolled her eyes. Then why did you claim that I never told you about it before? Zhong Yi said innocently, but it's true that you never told me about it. I only knew because I overheard when you were telling another classmate back in school. Dong Shanshan asked, then how did you suddenly learn how to sing? Zhong Yi laughed, that's a secret. 
Zhang Yuanqi also walked up to him and said with a smile, How many favors do you owe me this time? Zhang Yi replied nervously, Isn't one more than enough? Zhang Yuanqi said, I guessed it was you. Zhang Yi smiled and said, But you weren't very sure about it. Right, because I've heard you sing on the spot before, Zhang Yuanqi said. Zhang Xia also remembered the day Zhang Yi wrote Woman Flower and sang it on the spot for her and Yuanqi backstage during the Spring Festival Gala. They really did not find anything flattering about his singing skill and voice at that time. Coupled with A Letter to Home, which he sang on Beijing Television's Spring Festival Gala, no one had expected that Zhang Yi would know how to sing. This was also the reason why no one thought of him as a possibility. As such, when everyone saw the clown after he took off his mask, that shock was really too great to handle. Over there. The Beijing television staff also rushed up to him all at once. Da Fei shouted, Director Zhong. The moment Hu Ge came up to Zhong Yi, he gave him a bear hug. How could it be you? Xiao Lu came over. Hu Fei came over. Han Qi also excitedly ran up to him. Teacher Zhong. You were so amazing. We were trying to guess who the clown was. Why is it you? How could it possibly be you? Did you really win? I was wondering who could have written so many heaven-defying classics. Han Qi's eyes reddened a little as she got very excited at seeing her idol. Teacher Zhong, I like every one of your songs. I love them to death. Zhong Yi looked at her and said with a smile, Thank you, little Han. Thanks for all your hard work these past several days. Then he gave the group a fist and palm salute. Everyone, I'm sorry that I had to hide this from you. I was afraid that if my identity was exposed, the show would be dragged down by me, so I had to keep it a secret. If there's anything that I did wrong, I'll treat everyone to dinner as an apology at a later time. Ha ha. All of a sudden, someone wrapped their arms around Zhong Yi's waist and lifted him up. Then a lot of people from Beijing television surrounded Zhong Yi and raised him up high. They threw him up in the air. They caught him. They threw him up in the air again. They caught him again. Champion. 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 Today. He was a national sensation. Translator's thoughts leg leg let's start easing towards the next arc. No hangovers, and keep commenting. Chapter 1083, Zhong Yi's latest celebrity ranking? The next day. Sunday. At his parents' house, Zhong Yi slept all the way until 10 in the morning. After he had sent his parents home from the competition venue last night, he headed straight to bed and dozed off immediately for a full 11 hours of sleep. Over these past few days, he had become incredibly tired. It was much too tiring having to do the production, choose his songs, arrange music, practice his singing, record the show, and attend the live broadcast. He was just like a warrior who did not know what fatigue meant. Throughout the duration of the competition, he even experienced staying up for two days and nights in a row, as well as not succumbing to a fever of 40 degrees Celsius. It had been two months, and now the competition was finally over. When the tension he had been experiencing was released, he was immediately overcome with a heavy sense of fatigue that made him sleep until now. His cell phone had run out of battery. He rolled over and plugged it into the charger before turning his phone on, all without stepping out of his bed. There were quite a few notifications of missed calls and messages received on his cell phone's display. His old colleague, Ha Chichi, Director Zhong. Me, Zhong Zui, Little Wang, and everyone else all saw the moment you got crown champion on stage. Great job. Congratulations. Central TV Department 14's director Yang Tianfei, Teacher Zhong, you're really not being a bro here. Why didn't you let me know about such an important thing? Ha ha, I couldn't get through to you, so I'm sending you this message to congratulate you. I thought that you'd really stop doing things after getting banned and were really going to behave yourself from now on, ha ha. But seeing that you're back now, I'm relieved. You're still the same old teacher Little Zhong that I knew, always going around and stirring up trouble every other day. His university classmate, Yuingi, old classmate, you're really on fire now. In the entire entertainment industry, you're the most popular one of all. When are you going to treat us to a meal? Quickly set a date. I can't wait. 
His old colleague, Tian Bin, Old Jong, do you intend to ascend to the heavens? A-list movie star, Ning Lan, did you have to make such a big splash? His friends and colleagues all came to congratulate him and express their shock at the same time. Zhong Yi was lying in bed and smiling as he read the messages, replying to them one by one. For the entire morning, the internet, newspapers, and news broadcasts were all reporting about the clown and Zhong Yi, as well as King of Masked Singers. Admittedly, Zhong Yi's position was slightly more awkward since he was currently soft banned without any official statement or clarification from the authorities. Any news reports regarding him were also greatly controlled. However, yesterday's live broadcast had caused such a big stir that there was no one who did not know about it anymore. So the media couldn't possibly avoid not mentioning Zhong Yi's name and not report about it even if they wanted to. Curtains fall on King of Masked Singers, the Clown Crown Champion. Inconceivable. King of Masked Singers the Clown's true identity. The Clown turns out to be Zhong Yi. The Clown's I am what I am send shockwaves through audience. Zhong Yi performs another astonishing crossover. A layman sweeps away the music industry. King of Masked Singers to hold live concert next week. Zhong Yi's appearance still unknown. Our reporter inquires over the phone, authorities yet to make statement. Zhong Yi, entertainment industry's professional, shit stirrer. Watch out, music industry musicians. Here comes Zhong Yi. People throughout the country were still in a state of shock. Fan Wenli had also taken her mask off yesterday, as did Li Xiaoxian. But as their identities had long since been speculated by the netizens, there didn't exist an element of surprise. However, no one had been able to guess the clown's real identity all this time. Then there was also the fact that the name of Zhong Yi itself had always been a focal point, and his status was unlike Fan Wenli and Li Xiaoxian's, who were professional singers. A host, director, mathematician and someone who meddled in the Chinese language had been crowned the grand champion of King of Masked Singers, by taking down a series of professional singers like Fan Wenli, Li Xiaoxian, Zhao Chichuan, and many others. This made many of the industry insiders want to vomit blood. This was too unreasonable. Zhong Yi, did you intend to blast off from Earth? Any topic related to Zhong Yi had always been this hotly debated. He was truly the most wondrous person in show business. No one could predict what he would do next. Ever since his debut, everything he did would always shock a group of people. Just look. It was no exception this time. Outside, the door opened. His parents came home in a laughing mood. Zhong Yi quickly got out of bed and strolled into the living room. Dad, Mom, where did you go? You just woke up. His mother was grinning from ear to ear. She placed the plastic bags in her hands down. Your dad and I went grocery shopping. I must cook some good dishes for you in the afternoon to celebrate. His father glanced at his wife and said, what grocery shopping? Your mom went out early this morning to brag. She reached the market at 8 a.m. and started bragging the moment we bumped into every neighbor we saw. Look at the time now. It's already 11 a.m. His mother was having none of it. What's wrong with me bragging about my son? His father threw his hands up and said, All right, all right, I didn't say that it was wrong. His mother harumphed. My son is so popular. Why am I not allowed to tell others about it? His father pursed his lips at Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi laughed and said, Mom, just go ahead and tell anyone you like, no one will stop you. Let's quickly eat lunch. I'm getting hungry already. I haven't had anything much to eat at all. His mother immediately said, wait a bit, wait a bit. It'll be ready soon. Just before stepping into the kitchen, she suddenly turned around and asked, by the way, son, what's your popularity score now? Where are you ranked? Zhong Yi was taken aback. Oh, I would have forgotten if you hadn't mentioned it. His mother urged, quickly go and check. You were at the last two places on the A-list rankings last time, but it should have changed by now. Go check and see how many spots you've advanced. Zhong Yi nodded. All right. In recent days, his popularity score had been at a standstill while the celebrities behind him had kept increasing their popularity, and were catching up to him. Like Li Yu, who had exposed his own identity on King of Masked Singers. He was close to returning to the A-list celebrity rankings once again. 
Meanwhile, Zhong Yi, who hadn't been appearing much on screen and had few new works, had dropped to the last two spots on the A-list rankings. He was in a very precarious position. Yesterday's unmasking was a turning point for him as he finally did not need to worry about dropping back down to the B-list rankings. He would definitely advance in the rankings although he did not know by how many positions he would advance. He quickly went back to his room and powered on his computer. Zhong Yi typed in the address to the official website of the Celebrity Rankings Index and loaded the page. But the page could not load. Please try again. This notification was all that was on the page. Zhong Yi refreshed the page. The page was still unable to load. What was happening? Why couldn't he access the site? He immediately went onto Weibo to check. Be it the netizens or the industry insiders, everyone was confused about what was going on. The celebrity rankings website is not loading? I'm experiencing the same thing. Is there something wrong with my connection? It's not your connection. The site has been inaccessible since midnight. Eh? But that's not possible. This is the official website. Nothing like this has ever happened before. Yeah, what's going on? This has never happened in the past. What's their technical team doing? We're at a crucial point in time right now. I was hoping to check out Fan Wenli's popularity ranking. I was waiting to see John Yees. He was about to drop off the A-list rankings the last time I checked. A lot of those in the entertainment industry were also waiting. The influence of King of Masked Singers was so widespread. Its songs dominated the top Chinese music chart, and the popularity score gain it gave was also astonishing. Those involved in the show would always check their own rankings the following day to see if there were any changes in their rankings, and how much their popularity scores had increased by. Even the celebrities and people from the talent agencies who did not have anything to do with the show would also check. They wanted to know if those who were on the show would have any changes in their ranking and whether they would be overtaken by them in the rankings. Popularity was the lifeblood of a celebrity. And this celebrity rankings index was the life chart of the entertainment industry. This issue was also being discussed in the goof group. Ning Lan, it's still not out yet? It's still not loading? Hua Dongfang, I don't know, perhaps something happened. Chen Guang sent a sweating emoji. On my lovely wife's request, I've been waiting up all night in the hopes of checking the rankings. I can wait no longer, so it's time to sleep. Xiao Dong appeared. Ha ha ha, brother Chen. You're truly a model husband. Amy, I'm waiting for our Xiao Xian's ranking to come out. Hurry, hurry. A male star said, this has never happened before in the many years it's existed, so what's going on today? Noon. Twelve o'clock sharp. There was finally an official announcement. It was an announcement that dumbfounded the entire entertainment industry and the public. The announcement was as follows, explanation regarding the temporary inaccessibility of the Celebrity Rankings Index website. Due to the rising influence of a certain variety show in recent times, the data statistics of the Rankings Index have been affected to a certain extent. In addition, the popularity score of a certain celebrity has seen fluctuation on too wide of a scale. The amount of data collected has exceeded more than what our systems can handle and this caused a temporary outage to our system. At the moment, our technical team is stepping in to rectify it as soon as possible. We sincerely apologize for inconveniencing everyone. We will be making another announcement when the rankings index is updated and returns to service. A certain variety show? Wouldn't that be King of Masked Singers? A certain celebrity? Wouldn't that be Zhong Yi? When this announcement was made, everyone was dumbfounded. On Weibo. What? Zhong Yi's popularity score has greatly fluctuated? And it even crippled their systems? Foot, are they serious? Why is it that everything that goes wrong has to do with Zhong Yi, ha ha ha? Holy cow, just how much did teacher Zhong's popularity score increase by? It even hecking crippled their systems? That's nothing strange with that. When the clown took his mask off yesterday, that was an instantaneous moment. Because of that, the system would have to transfer all of the clown's popularity score from the previous month or so to Zhong Yi. Perhaps the data for that really did overflow. Pfft, teacher Zhong is really great.
He even brought down the celebrity rankings index that had been operating fine for so long. I'm cramping up from laughing. Teacher Jong is so mighty. Teacher Jong is so impressive. Suddenly, someone posted the poem that Jong Yi recited at last night's grand finals. Life fantasia. Especially those last few lines. No matter how you looked at it, it was got the blood going. Many of the netizens hadn't read Zhong Yi's poems in a long time, but it was still as domineering, earth-shaking, and moving as ever. I want to sing a human song that ages from now will chorus through the universe. The netizens started posting in the comments below. I like Zhong Yi so much. His poems are always so awesome. His songs as well. Earth no longer has a place that can contain Zhong Yi. Congratulations, Teacher Zhong. You're already blasting out into the universe. The Celebrity Rankings Index website could even get crippled? I really have to take my hat off to John Yi. The people in the industry didn't know how to react. The website crashed? It was John Yi's fault? Damn, just how much did your popularity score go up by this time? Chapter 1084, the first concert of its kind in the industry. The next day. The Celebrity Rankings Index website was still down. The netizens were continuing to gloat over this problem. At Zhong Yi. You made a huge mess. All the celebrity rankings have been wiped out because of you. Teacher Zhong Yi, you've caused trouble again. Ha 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 ha. Pissing myself laughing, this is so funny. Every time Zhong Yi does something, the entertainment industry experiences an earthquake. I just like how this fellow always causes trouble wherever he goes. As the cause of the problem, Zhong Yi could only wryly smile. What are you guys mentioning me for? What the heck has this got to do with me? Quite a number of netizens were blaming him for it, but of course they were just joking. The one thing that relieved Zhong Yi was that none of his music industry peers had scolded him this time around. Wang Zhuishu's Weibo, during the run of King of Masked Singers, my favorite singer was Petal Shower. But the one who sang best was definitely the clown. That's something that anyone would admit. A female musician, Zhong Yi is really the favored son of heaven. His music literacy is so good that you'd never believe that he isn't even a professional singer yet. A lyricist, no one has ever dared to sing only originals on any singing show. Only Zhong Yi would dare to do something like this. He's incredible. In the field of writing lyrics, there shouldn't be anyone who is a match for him. In the past, whenever Zhong Yi crossed over to a new industry, there would always be people calling him out. So those people from Zhong Yi's fan club were gearing up for a fight, ready to take on the industry peers in the music scene. But to their surprise, there was not even an opportunity to do so as no one scolded Zhong Yi at all. Instead, there was only praise all around. At around 2 in the afternoon, the official website of the Celebrity Rankings Index was finally partially restored after being down for close to 40 hours. The updated Celebrity Rankings were published. Countless netizens and entertainment industry insiders anxiously came to check. Fan Wenli's name glittered at the front of the B-list Celebrity Rankings. She was already in second place on the B-list rankings after her popularity score had increased by an unknown amount. There were also changes to Li Xiaoxian's ranking. She shot to the middle of the B list. Spinach, Liao Ichi, reached the front of the C list rankings. Flowing time, Zhao Chichuan, also experienced quite an increase to his popularity score. As the only host of the show, Dong Shanshan was almost within reach of the B list. Chen Guang, Yao Jintsai, Zhong Xia, and the others also skimmed some popularity off of King of Masked Singers. Their popularity had also grown, although it was not as much as those who took part in the show as contestants. Only Zhong Yuanchi's ranking did not change, but that was because she had already reached the top. Being an S-list heavenly queen, this increase to her popularity score might have been a large increase for others, but it was only considered a minor change for her. Of course, it wasn't negligible, but it wasn't really that much either. Everyone was happy. For the celebrities who took part in King of Masked Singers, the celebration and revelry this time was all to the credit of Zhong Yi alone. Whether it was from the perspective of the show's production or the copyright of the show, this entire show was essentially Zhong Yi's baby. Using his show and the production to gain their current popularity.
even if Flowing Time did have a conflict with the clown and clashed with Zhong Yi's fan club after the competition ended, he didn't have any complaints, all for that reason alone. He could blame the clown, but there wouldn't be any pointing of fingers at Zhong Yi. On Weibo. Fan Wenli has risen in the ranking so quickly. That's really fast. She's already second place on the B-list rankings. She could even get to this position by purely singing. I guess it's only Fan Wenli who could do something like that, right? Ha ha, old Chen had better work harder. He's been overtaken by his wife. Li Xiaoxian is really fearsome too. Spring Garden is gonna blow up. Yeah, all of the Spring Garden members are now B-list celebs. Put them together and there would simply be no competition. They deserve to be called the number one girl group. Definitely one of the top ten in Asia. A, hey, where's Zhong Yi's name? Damn, you're right. Why isn't Zhong Yi's name listed? There's no sign of him on the rankings at all. I've also checked. His name really isn't there. The netizens all rushed to lodge complaints with the official website in an instant. In the end, another announcement was made. Explanation regarding Zhong Yi's celebrity ranking. The system is currently undergoing maintenance to repair the statistics to recalculate Zhong Yi's popularity score. Our technical team will strive to complete the maintenance within the week. Only his ranking was not fixed. The system was not fully repaired yet. It's still not done? I'm just waiting to see Zhong Yi's ranking. I'm also waiting for it. They will get it fixed within the week. Isn't the King of Masked Singers concert scheduled for this Saturday? Are they going to wait until then to calculate all of his data at once? Anything that involves Zhong Yi always ends up a mess. Zhong Yi has probably created history in the entertainment industry with that, hasn't he? Pfft. I'm really looking forward to this weekend's concert. I wonder what songs Zhong Yi will sing. Me too. I can't wait. Looking forward to seeing Fan Wenli's performance. How I wish I could attend the concert. How can we get tickets? Or do they only give them out through a lottery? Are there scalpers selling any? The topic gradually changed to the weekend concert. Countless viewers were anticipating it highly as there had never before been a concert like this. This was going to be an unprecedented concert that no other variety show had put on before. It wasn't that the other singing shows did not want to hold one, but that they were not popular enough to do so. King of Masked Singers was the first to hold one and had booked an entire stadium that could hold tens of thousands of spectators. It was the first in the industry. The first in the entire country. Beijing Television invited everyone from all walks of life to join in the celebration. Of course, there was also a small issue here that everyone was worried about. Beijing Television. Hu Fei asked, have you guys sent it upstairs already? Hu Ge nodded. Yes, but the SARFT did not make a single comment. Not a word? Hu Fei was startled. Hu Ge gave a wry smile. Nothing. Da Fei blinked several times. Then would that mean that teacher Zhong can take part in the concert and it'll be fine? Is this how we should understand this? Hu Ge shook his head. How would I know? Hu Fei felt that this was strange and was wondering about it. Have you guys realized? In this past year, the SARFTs toward Little Zhong has changed a lot. They barely touch him anymore? Just think about it. I think the SARFT also did not issue any statements regarding the air pollution documentary incident. What's more, the air pollution documentary even managed to stay online for a few days. And there was that time when those associations issued a joint statement to make those changes but were chased away by Little John with, the international. The SARFT did not say anything and even criticized those associations for cooking up those nonsensical guidelines. All these incidents don't add up. Xiao Lu added, now that you've brought it up, that's true. Hu Ge said excitedly, then does that mean that teacher Zhong's ban has been lifted? Hu Fei replied, not necessarily. Who knows? Since no one has said anything against it, we'll just go ahead with the concert arrangements. Everyone, start getting down to work. We must do well and make this first concert of its kind a success. Let's make it beautiful. We'll have the perfect finale for King of Masked Singers. 
none of you are allowed to screw this up. Back home. Zhong Yi received a lot of calls to thank him. The first call was from Fan Wenli. Thanks, Director Zhong. What are you thanking me for? Your show, of course. Who else would I be thanking if not you? Haha, ha, you're welcome. See you at the concert this weekend. Then came Liao Yichi's call. Thank you, Teacher Zhong. You're welcome, Student Spinach. Hee hee, I've mooched off of you this time. My popularity has grown by so much. An advertising company just approached me to give me an endorsement and offered me 3 million renminbi straight up. I was stunned since I was never worth that much in the past. 3 million isn't that much. You're really popular now, so I think you can still push for more. Eh? Just take my advice. All right then, I'll listen to you. After hanging up, Zhong Yi smiled. Since his popularity score hadn't been calculated yet, he stopped thinking about it. It was better to do something fruitful, like choosing a song for the concert. He definitely had to be well prepared for it even though it was no longer a competition. Although he had already been crowned the champion, he was still not going to be sloppy about things. As long as it was related to work, Zhong Yi would take it seriously. Which song then? For this final song, what should he sing? Chapter 1085, Piano Playing Coming from the Room The next day. The King of Masked Singers concert was getting hyped up. Be it within the industry or to the audience, everyone was looking forward to that day. They were also anticipating what kind of finale the clown, petal shower, sunset glow, flowing time, king of oddity, spinach, and the others would perform for the concert. In the morning. John Yi got up and ate breakfast. Ring, ring, ring. The clown's cell phone was ringing. John Yi was startled at first, then answered it. Hello, little Han? On the other end of the line, Han Chi said, Good morning, teacher Zhong. Zhong Yi laughed and said, Why are you still calling me on this cell phone? Han Chi said in embarrassment, Ah, I got used to it and didn't notice. Teacher Zhong, director who wanted me to inform you that the concert this weekend will proceed according to plan. You can take part in the concert since the SARFT did not raise any objections. All right, I understand. Han Chi said, We found it quite strange. We were already prepared for an inquiry by the SARFT on this matter, but surprisingly, nothing came of it in the end. Zhong Yi smiled. Isn't that good? Han Chi asked, Have you decided on the song that you'll be singing? When can you start rehearsing? Zhong Yi thought about it. I haven't decided yet. I'll contact you again within the next two days. Why didn't the authorities say anything? They did not know what the reason was, but Zhong Yi did. His mother looked at him. Are they pressing you for the song that you'll be singing at the concert? Zhong Yi grunted in affirmation. His mother asked with interest, Are you ready? What song will you be singing? Are you going to sing another song for me and your dad? That I really love you was quite a good song. Zhong Yi coughed and said, Probably not. I still haven't decided on what to sing after thinking about it all last night. I still need to give it some thought. However, Zhong Yi wanted to handle something else right now. He had to take his mind off the concert for a while. Dad, Mom, I need to go out after lunch. I won't be coming home for dinner tonight. Where are you running off to now? I'm going out to buy a piano. Do we have any space for that at home? He had something that he wanted to do. It was something that was very important to him. Later that morning. In a piano shop without many customers. The shop was rather empty. Other than the female manager, there was no one else around at the moment. A young man wearing a pair of sunglasses and a surgical mask pushed open the door and walked in. Hello, do you have a piano for sale? I'm looking for a decent one. The female manager nonchalantly looked up and suddenly screamed, Ah! Zhong Yi was frightened. Whoa, what's the matter? The female manager seemed to have seen a ghost. Zhong Yi. You are Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi smiled and said, You can even recognize me like this? The female manager blurted out, I've been following King of Masked Singers every week. I can recognize you even if you turn to ashes. 
Then, probably realizing that it sounded a little inappropriate, she quickly said, Ayo, I love you to death. You sang so well. You want to buy a piano? You don't have to pay. I'll give you a piano for free. You can choose from any of the pianos in the shop. Zhong Yi waved her off. How could that do? The female manager said in embarrassment, it's all right, just, let me take a picture with you to put in our shop. Consider it promotion for us. Zhong Yi smiled at that and said, how about this? I'll pay for the piano and also take a picture with you, that okay? The female manager immediately said, that would be great. Is the piano a gift for someone or yourself? Let me recommend you the best piano we have in our shop. Although it's a bit expensive, but hi, it's not like you're poor or anything. Come, come. What do you think of this piano? It's a high-end one, I wouldn't sell it to just anyone. Whether she was usually this talkative or just excited to see him, Zhong Yi didn't know. He just listened to her chatter away anyway. Finally, he selected the piano he wanted. Where should I deliver it? Please write down an address for us. You don't have to deliver it. I need it today, so can you get someone to help me tie it up on my car? Ah? What kind of a car do you have? A BMW X5. But there's no way to fit it in there. Just secure it on top of the car. How can that do? Your car will get scratched. It's a bulletproof car. You won't be able to scratch it. Ah, uh, th then I'll get someone to give it a try. The female manager knew that a big shot like Zhong Yi would not be willing to let others know his address, so she wasn't exactly surprised at this and immediately went to find someone. Evening. 6 p.m. Wu Ziqing had just gotten off from work and was walking out of the office building. Chief Wu. You're leaving? Chief Wu, take care. It's been hard on you, Chief Wu. Wu Ziqing nodded at them with a smile. You guys knock off early when you finish working. A department supervisor walked quickly to her and said with an anguished look, Chief Wu, about the list for the concert that was submitted by King of Masked Singers, Wu Ziqing waved it off and said, it's already been decided. Don't bring it up anymore. The supervisor said nervously, but Chief Chen seems to, if he has any problems, get him to come and look for me, Wu Ziqing said calmly. Oh, all right then. Secretary Bai Li quickly caught up with her. Chief Wu, you can't drive your car today, right? I'll send you home. Wu Ziqing nodded. Okay. In the car. Bai Li blinked and said, what are you having for dinner tonight? Wu Ziqing smiled and said, I'll just go home and fix something up for dinner. Since I'm eating alone, I can make do with anything. Bai Li instinctively asked, you're still single? Then she realized her slip of the tongue. Oh, look at me, I always ask about things that I shouldn't be asking. Please don't take it to heart. Wu Ziqing smiled. You've been working for me for a year. Why are you still so restrained? Bai Li laughed and said, because you're the boss. They arrived at Wu Ziqing's place. Bai Li said, I'll be going then, Chief Wu. Wu Ziqing smiled and said, all right, thank you. She turned around and walked into the villa's yard in her high heels. She had a glance at the flowers in the yard and thought that they looked quite beautiful. Walking to the front door, she took out her keys to open the door and bent down to change into her slippers. It was the same thing every day. It was the same routine every day. Opening the door. Changing into her slippers. Opening the refrigerator. Making dinner. Except something different happened today. The moment Wu Ziqing closed the door, she could hear piano playing coming from upstairs. She didn't have a piano at home. There shouldn't be anyone in her house. Old Wu looked up to the second floor and was stunned for a moment. Then she headed straight for the upstairs. The sound of the piano was very soothing. The melody sounded really nice too. All of a sudden, a voice softly drifted out in the room. It was a man's voice. It was a very clean male voice one. I have loved, and also lost. Tasted the sweet and tart parts of love. Escaped from the irony of fate. I know what I want. There is an indescribable state. Created by all emotions thereof. Why ponder the meaningless cost? 
What in this world is there to be proud of? Wu Zixing walked up the stairs. The sound of the piano was getting closer and closer. The singing was also getting closer and closer. The man sang loudly. If I'm without you, I keep my eyes on the distant peaks. But miss the turn on the track. Suddenly I looked back. I found you waiting for me, you were always there. I searched down in the seas of pitch black. And ignored the meandering rivers. When I found myself going against the tide. You were at my side, pushing me on. The door to the study was ajar. Wu Ziqing stood at the door. Seeing the man at the piano, she didn't know what to do for a moment. Where did the piano come from? What was with this song? The man sitting at the piano was Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi continued to play. I know that I am very rich. Because love fulfills all. Every hole in my life. You filled them with your sincerity. Right now. From this moment on. I want to hold you in my arms. And give you twice the affection. I want to sing a love song dedicated to you. So please listen. Old Wu. This song is dedicated to you. Actually, I've wanted to sing you a song since a long, long time ago. But there just wasn't a chance to do so. I will only ever sing this song for you. Thank you for not leaving me when I was most down and out. Thank you for always staying by my side. As everyone knows, I'm not someone who usually speaks seriously and I don't know how to express what I really want to say. There are some things that I just can't put into words. So, please, let me sing for you. Zhong Yi sang in the tenor range. I kept my eyes on the distant peaks. But missed the turn on the track. Suddenly I looked back. I found you waiting for me, you were always there. I searched down in the seas of pitch black. And ignored the meandering rivers. When I found myself going against the tide. You were at my side, pushing me on. Outside the villa. A neighbor opened their window in shock. A lady driving home stopped her car in the neighborhood and rolled down the window with a stunned look. Who's playing the piano? Who's singing? Why haven't I heard this song before? It sounds really nice. Isn't this song way too good? That lady and several of the closer neighbors were visibly moved by what they heard. Just who are you? Who are you singing for? Chapter 1086, Old Wu wants to attend the concert too. In the neighborhood. It echoed with the melodious notes of a piano. The piano is one of the very few instruments that do not require a power source or connection to any audio equipment to be heard inside a large enclosed space or concert hall. Of course, it would have to be a grand piano meant for such venues to achieve that. On this note, both the cello and the violin cannot achieve the same sound amplification of a mechanical percussive transmission one. Although the piano that Zhong Yi bought was an upright piano, its sound amplification was still quite outstanding. However, once in an open space, the sound of the piano would diffuse a little. Several neighbors in the vicinity of Old Wu's villa could vaguely hear a man singing. Although the singing could not be heard further out in the neighborhood, the faint sound of a piano playing still managed to float out to their ears. The security guards at the neighborhood's entrance turned around in shock. The residents of the neighborhood stopped in their tracks. A lot of people were attracted to the sound of the piano and got enchanted by it. He finished singing. The sound of the piano gradually drifted away. Everyone was looking around for the source of the music. Where did it come from? Which house did the playing come from? Was it a sound system? No, it must have been played on an actual piano. Who could be so talented? Does our neighborhood have someone so talented? At Old Wu's residence. In the upstairs study. After he played the final note, Zhong Yi took his hands off the keys and put the full board down. Then he smiled at Wu Ziqing. Wu Ziqing looked at him. What's the title of this song? Zhong Yi said, you were always there. Wu Ziqing smiled and said, is it for me? Yes. What do you think of it? Zhong Yi wasn't sure if old Wu liked it. Wu Ziqing smiled and asked, I like it very much. When did you learn how to play the piano? When were you able to sing that well? Hum? Zhong Yi gave a hearty laugh and said, Hi, 
please don't mind those small details. Did you just buy this piano? Yep. I bought it this morning, then drove it here. It was really quite heavy and nearly crushed my car. Fortunately, I own a bulletproof car and the frame is a special make as well. You didn't get someone to deliver it? I was afraid that they might know where you live. So you carried this piano into the house and upstairs all by yourself? Yeah, this weighs nothing. John Yi started boasting. Wu Ziqing pointed at the upright piano. A piano that weighs three to four hundred pounds, and you carried it up here all by yourself? Of course. John Yi boasted shamelessly, even if it were two pianos stacked on top of each other, I could still carry them up here. These words of his were merely meant for boasting. In reality, it had taken all of Zhong Yi's strength to carry in this piano that weighed 300 odd pounds. This was even with him having martial arts and already maxing out on the fruits of strength and stamina from the lottery draw, one. It was just that old Wu had not seen how much effort it took for this fellow to carry it in earlier, so he started bragging about being able to carry two pianos by himself now. 700, 800 pounds? Even if this fellow had used his concealed power, he still would not be able to carry them. Besides, concealed power was not meant to be used in such a way. It was an instantaneous kind of power that could only be used for destroying, not for carrying things. Wu Ziqing smiled. Zhong Yi probably thought that he had bragged by too much, as he quickly changed the subject. Old Wu, have a seat. Are you angry at me about this matter? Wu Ziqing saw that his collar was slightly crumpled, probably from carrying the piano earlier. It was also a little dirty, so she reached out and straightened it for him and patted off the dust. Why would I be angry with you? Zhong Yi stood still and let her adjust it for him. Because I didn't tell you that I went to participate in King of Masked Singers. Actually, it's not that I didn't want to tell you. In fact, I had wanted to tell only you about it. In the end, I was just too embarrassed to bring it up after a long hesitation the other day. The main issue was that I'd never sung before. As it was my first time singing on stage and this being such a huge competition, it would have been really embarrassing if I lost by the second episode. So I thought it might be better not to say anything about it at first and only tell you about it after I became the champion. So here I am, immediately coming to seek your forgiveness after I got crowned grand champion. I practiced the song that I just sang for you for a very long time. Wu Ziqing said gently, I couldn't be any happier for you, so why would I be angry with you? You're really in the limelight this time. Not bad, you didn't make me ashamed. Zhong Yi smiled and said, that's true. Take off your shirt. I'll wash it for you later since it's dirty, Wu Ziqing said. Okay. He did not stand on ceremony. Are you hungry? Not yet. We'll eat in a bit? Sure. Then do something for me first. Oh. What is it? Wu Ziqing did not say anything and searched around the study. She took out the four treasures of the study too and immediately began to grind the ink. Then she said, write down the lyrics of the song that you just sang for me. I can't remember them after listening to them just once. When you're done writing, I'll hang it and read it at my own leisure. Zhong Yi immediately said, that's not a problem. I've prepared the ink. How would you like me to write it? How many scripts do you know? I can write it in regular, semi-cursive, clerical, or cursive script. He thought about saying how he could also write in Microsoft YAA3 if he wanted to, but Old Wu would surely not understand what he meant by that. Old Wu smiled and said, how about semi-cursive? I like your semi-cursive. All right. Zhong Yi immediately began writing. A set of lyrics was written down in a free-flowing motion. Wu Ziqing held up the Xian paper for it to dry and took a look. The more she looked at it, the more she liked it. As she gazed at the calligraphy, Zhong Yi looked at her. Since it was summer, old Wu was dressed lightly and looked especially elegant in the thin, classic chipao. The more he looked at her, the more he liked her. All of a sudden, old Wu looked up and said, Oh yeah, I've got something to tell you. Your ban will officially be lifted today. Although the SARFT won't be issuing any notices or documentation about it nor will there be any announcements to the public, there won't be a restriction on any news and shows related to you anymore. 
In fact, your ban was scheduled to be lifted soon, but King of Masked Singers expedited the process. You've caused such a big ruckus that they were unable to keep the ban on you for longer, even if they wanted. So they might as well use the opportunity to lift your ban. Even though there are still some people in the organization who are opposed to it, I've taken care of them, so it's not going to be a big deal. And there might be some flexibility given to the air pollution documentary. With some editing, I think there could be some hope that it gets re-released to the public. I will be following up on this matter. He had been unbanned. This bro had regained his freedom. This was no doubt the happiest news Zhong Yi had heard in recent days. Zhong Yi smiled and said, Thanks, old Wu. Wu Zicheng said, You fought for this. It has nothing much to do with me. You've been crowned grand champion of King of Masked Singers and even took your mask off during the live broadcast. Did you think you would stay banned after all that? Furthermore, your songs were very good too. That's one of the most crucial factors as you have quite a few songs that were full of positivity. For example, Strive Hard to Succeed, Life's More Than the Grind, and I Really Love You. All of those songs were a great help in changing your image. So there's no need to thank me as you were the one who grabbed this opportunity. Without this show, you might have needed to wait at least another month or two before your ban was lifted. John Yi blinked and said, The International is also a very inspirational song. He personally liked the song a lot. On that day, he vented most of his anger after he sang it. On that day, the feeling of having everyone stand up and sing loudly along with him was just so satisfying. Wu Ziqing looked at him. Don't mention that song. Do you know how big of a mess it created? Zhong Yi smiled and said, All right, I understand. I won't sing it much in the future. Wu Ziqing asked, How are your preparations for the concert going? Zhong Yi said, Hi, I still haven't decided what song to sing yet. Wu Ziqing smiled. Take your time, there's no need to hurry. Any song that you sing will definitely be good. Zhong Yi especially liked hearing that and could feel a warmth in his chest. He really had never come across a woman like Old Wu before. It was as though Old Wu found whatever he did to be good and would always give him her support. Furthermore, Old Wu would never broach further on a subject if it was something he did not wish to speak about or preferred to keep secret. She always gave him a lot of space and respect in that regard. She was always beside him, supporting him and encouraging him on his journey. Wu Ziqing suddenly asked, Do you have any tickets for the concert left? Zhong Yi was surprised. Of course. Why? Wu Ziqing smiled. I would like to attend in person and listen to you sing. You really want to go? Yes, I want to go there in my own personal capacity. Although the broadcast is on Saturday, the recording is scheduled for Friday afternoon. You don't have to work. I'll take the day off. My fiancé will be staging a concert. Even if the sky falls, I must go. Just look at the way she put it. Zhong Yi loved hearing it. All right. I'll get a ticket for you. It'll definitely be a front row seat. That's not necessary. I'm fine with sitting wherever. That won't do. You won't be able to see me if you're seated too far away. Thinking about how Wu Ziqing would also be there on that day to listen to him sing, Zhong Yi was suddenly quite looking forward to it. At the same time, he also felt a little more nervous about it. He suddenly thought of a song and knew exactly what he would be singing at the concert. It was a very nice song. It was a song about one's ideals. Chapter 1087, The Concert Begins. Friday. In the afternoon. There was a sea of people at the Beijing Stadium. Where are the Fan Wenli fans? Zhao Chichuan's fans, please gather under the billboard. Over here. Here. Come with me. Where are the Zhong Yi fans? Coming. We're here. Hurry, it's time to distribute the items. Glow sticks for everyone. They're free. Don't buy from those people out there. They're so expensive. Even before entering the stadium, the bustle outside was spectacular. Vehicles had already occupied all of the underground parking garage spots and roads around the venue. There were no more free spots and the roads were no longer accessible other than the one that was leading west toward the suburbs. 
the roads in the other three directions were jam-packed. At the entrance, it was as though the entire population of Beijing's merchants and peddlers were gathered here. There were people selling celebrity posters, glow sticks, scalp tickets, and even the King of Masked Singers contestants, genuine, autographs. The media outlet's vehicles also arrived one after another. It was a flurry of activity. The place was heating up. On Weibo. The netizens also made a racket. Who still has tickets for the concert? It's beginning soon. I can't wait. Ha ha, I'm already at the venue and waiting to get admitted. Previous poster, bragging like this will only end up with you getting beaten up. How I wish I could go and watch them perform live. Especially Zhang Yi's songs. Why do I like him so much? I wonder what song he'll sing today. Our Xiaoxian is quite good too. Everyone knows that Zhang Yi is good at writing songs, but I'm still finding it difficult to accept that the guy can also sing this well. It's impossible to measure a person like him with common sense. He was born to be a star. You're wrong. Zhang Yi wasn't born to be one. Yeah, he was never meant to be a celebrity at all. He had to fight so hard to be where he is now. This has been a very difficult journey for teacher Zhang Yi, and everyone knows that. I wonder how he has managed to survive for this long. I heard that the SARFT has not said anything either this time and allowed Zhong Yi to take part in the concert. Does that mean that Zhong Yi has been unbanned? I'm so happy for him. Yeah. The ban has finally been lifted. Inside the stadium. The singers had already arrived for some time. There were not only Zhong Yi, Fan Wenli, and those other singers who had taken part in the King of Masked Singers competition. Even Chen. Guang, Zhongxia, Amy, Celery, and several other celebrity guests were also backstage and getting ready for the concert. They too would be taking part in the concert today. Executive Director Hu Fei said, We've been preparing for this concert for quite some time now. We practically started preparing for it since the broadcast of the first episode and had the stadium booked since that time. The entire country's attention is on us now so I hope we can make this industry's first concert based on a variety show a great success. I'll leave all that to you, so let's execute this beautifully. With a pause, he reminded them, by the way, there's something else to note. It wasn't reported on yesterday's weather forecast, but this morning's forecast predicted that there could be rain today. So, everyone, please be aware of this possibility. Hu Ge came over to look for him. Director Hu, we need you over at the stage. Hu Fei nodded, then said to the other staff members, I'm going to the front for a bit. If there's anything urgent over here, ask Director Zhong for advice. He can take charge of the things here. Xiao Lu replied, yes, sir. Han Qi replied, understood. Everyone responded in kind, thinking it was a matter of course. However, Zhong Yi did not seem to care for anything right now. He lowered his head and continued texting. Zhong Yi, are you here yet? Wu Ziqing, I just arrived. There was a traffic jam. Zhong Yi, are you lining up to get in yet? Wu Ziqing, yes, I'm passing through security now. Zhong Yi, let me get someone to bring you in. Wu Ziqing, there's no need. Don't alarm too many people. Most of your staff knows who I am, so it's better for me to keep a low profile. After all, I'm here in my own personal capacity today. John Yi, okay. Chen Guan came over. Director Zhong, who are you chatting with? John Yi looked up and smiled. What's up? Fan Wenli looked at her husband. Stay away. Don't come over here and try to pry any information from us. Chen Guan yelled, Must I, Wenli? Li Xiaoxian also smiled. We belong to different camps today. Amy rolled her eyes. Teacher Chen, let's give our best and sing well today. We'll stamp them down. Chen Guang harumphed. All right. Zhang Xia laughed and shook her head. You people. Today's opening song was going to be an explosive and attention-stealing showdown between the contestants and the celebrity guests. Each side was a team, the contestants' team versing the celebrity guests' team. Everyone was looking forward to this matchup. Just look. Even before going on stage, the competitiveness from both sides was picking up. 
Half an hour later, people gradually filled the stadium. In the blink of an eye, the seats were packed with over 10,000 people. Some of the audience members were shouting their favorite celebrities' names, some were holding up lead lightboards and waving them around, while others were bursting into songs performed on King of Masked Singers. Sunset Glow. The Clown. Flowing Time. Petal Shower. I am what I am, a firework of different colors. Why is the concert still not beginning? I can't warrate. The scenes were very chaotic. The audience was reaching a fever pitch. Wu Ziqing finally got into the stadium at this point in time. She found her way to the second row of front row seats and checked her ticket to find her seat. As she made her way across the row, she smiled warmly. Excuse me, coming through. But a little ways in, someone called out to her. It was a middle-aged married couple. Hey! President Wu! President Wu! The couple looked at her, startled. Wu Ziqing turned around in confusion and asked, You two are. Zhong Yi's mother stood up excitedly. I am Zhong Yi's mother. Wu Ziqing said, Oh, it's auntie. His father asked, Why are you also here? Wu Ziqing smiled and said, Well, I'm off today. So I came to watch the concert. Ayo, hey, thank you so much for taking care of our little Yi. You've helped him a lot. We've been wanting to visit you to express our thanks, but we just didn't have the chance to do so, his mother said. Wu Ziqing said, Auntie, you're too kind. His mother immediately said, Sit here with us, sit. Little Yi gave us three tickets, but we have an empty seat now because his cousin was unable to make it. Wu Ziqing thought over the offer for a moment, then smiled and sat down. All right. His mother was very enthusiastic. President Wu, wait, I should be addressing you as Chief Wu instead. Wu Ziqing immediately said, don't call me that, auntie. You can just call me little Wu. That would be so inappropriate. It's not. Ha ha, can I really call you that? Of course. And so, Wu Ziqing started chatting together with Zhong Yi's parents, talking and laughing throughout their conversation. Taking some time out, Wu Ziqing quietly sent a message to Zhong Yi. I found a seat, I'm sitting together with your parents. Very quickly, she got a reply. Ah. Wu Ziqing, ha ha, I've wanted to meet your parents for a while now. What a coincidence. I won't be replying anymore. I want to chat some more with your parents. Zhong Yi, asterisk sweats asterisk okay. At this moment, the host, Dong Shan Shan, came out. When the crowd saw her, they gave her warm applause immediately. She's here. It's starting. Dong Shan Shan announced, Welcome, everyone, to King of Masked Singers, brought to you by our sponsor, Bright Fruit Coco. I'm your host, Dong Shan Shan. How are all of you? The audience cheered in response. After a slew of opening remarks, the main event finally kicked off. Dong Shan Shan smiled and said, Backstage today, there was so much going on. Two groups of people nearly clashed, with one side claiming that they could sing really well, while another side claimed that they could sing even better. They bickered so much that when I was asked to give my opinion on who was better, I was too scared to answer. I believe that we should let our audience decide. Clashed? Ha ha ha. The audience chuckled. Dong Shan Shan said, Next, let's welcome the all-stars onto the stage to perform I Believe One for everyone. She handed over the stage. Applause thundered. The music started playing. Spinach, Liao Ichi, took her microphone and went out onto the stage. I wanna fly to the sky, walk beside the sun. The world waits for me to change it. At the other end of the stage, Zhang Xia appeared and sang, Never been afraid of others seeing my dreams. Here, I can make it happen. Back on other side, Fan Wenli strode onto stage. Laughing loudly, let's walk side by side. Isn't happiness everywhere? At the other end, Amy appeared. Casting off all worries, I stride forward bravely. Now I am taking center stage. Li Xiaoxian, I believe I'm me, I trust tomorrow. Celery, I believe that youth has no limits. Zhong Yi appeared. Whether sunset at the beach or the crowded streets, it's the prettiest paradise for me. 
Chen Guang sang loudly, I believe in freedom. I believe in hope. I believe I can reach out and touch the sky. They sang all together. With you by my side. Life is more exciting. Every moment so wonderful. I do believe. The contestants were in one group. The celebrity guests were in another group. They sang one line one after the other as they appeared and took the stage. The two groups of people were apparently competing, trying to outdo and outsing the person before them. The atmosphere in the stadium flash ignited. Screams. Shouts. Clouds darkened the skies as the multicolored glow sticks started to come to life. This song was the theme song for The Voice. Back then, Zhang Yuanqi, Zhang Xia, Chen Guang, and Fan Wenli sang it together. Zhang Yi wrote this song. Chapter 1088, Vast Horizons. The audience reached a fever pitch. In the open-air stadium, the screaming sounded like it was piercing through the upper atmosphere. Awesome. What a star-studded event. All of them sang great. The song was well written in the first place. That's for sure. This song was written by Zhong Yi himself. Chen Guang's singing is a force to be reckoned with. I still prefer Zhong Yi a bit more. The two of them don't have the same style. Old Chen is better at explosive singing while Zhong Yi focuses more on emotional singing. Get lost. Zhong Yi is also very good at explosive singing. Can anyone replicate that last scream in Exaggerated? If you want to put it that way, then Old Chen is also good at emotional songs. Heck, what are you two arguing for? Ha ha, as to which of those two can sing better, they have to fight it out on stage for us to find out. We won't know from the song that they just sang. The first song ended. The audience applauded them. John Yi's mother was also furiously clapping in the audience. Great. Great. Come on, son. His father gave her a tug and Chin nodded in Wu Ching's direction. Calm down a little, will you? He was reminding her that the executive of the organization that oversaw the entertainment industry was sitting beside her. But his mother did not care. Little Wu, who do you think sang better? Wu Ziqing smiled and said, Zhong Yi sang the best. His mother said happily, Oh, you think so too? Wu Ziqing replied, MHM. I like his songs very much and feel that every one of them is good. At that, his mother grabbed Wu Ziqing's hands with a sense of familiarity and felt that she was becoming more and more pleasing to the eye. She started chattering to her again. Did you know? This kid's music genes all come from me. Wu Ziqing nodded. Yes, I can see that. His father nearly vomited a mouthful of blood. On stage, it was time for Fan Wenli's performance. When she came out on stage, the applause went up by several decibels. Petal shower. Petal shower. Everyone was still used to chanting her stage name. The next to take the stage was flowing time. Followed by spinach. Sunset glow. And king of oddity. The singers came out one after another. The screaming and shouting at the venue came wave after wave. They were midway through the concert when the skies turned even gloomier. Dark clouds blocked the moon and faint roars of thunder could be heard. It seemed like it was going to rain. Right at this moment, the clown took the stage. Many of the audience members were shaken. Some of them were very tired from clapping so much. But when they saw Zhong Yi, they started applauding again, crazy over him. Some of Zhong Yi's diehard fans even stood up and waved Zhong Yi's lead lightboards excitedly as they screamed his name. His mother exclaimed, It's my son's turn. My son. His father stared at the stage without blinking. Wu Ziqing watched him as he walked onto the stage, quietly waiting for his performance today. The clown. The clown. Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi. Fan Wenli and Chen Guang came to the front of the stage. Liao Yichi silently came out as well. Zhong Xia, Li Xiaoxian, and Amy did the same. When everyone saw each other, they smiled at one another. What are you guys doing out here? The feels aren't the same backstage. I'm curious about what song he'll be singing. They were all looking forward to hearing Zhong Yi's song today, so they came to the front to listen. This was because every song Zhong Yi sang was a song that they had never heard before. 
It was always going to be a surprise for them. Zhong Yi was already standing in his spot on stage. Eight, nine cameras were focused on him. Over 10,000 audience members were looking at him. Zhong Yi swept his eyes over them and spotted Wu Ziqing in the crowd. He also saw his parents, Fan Wenli and Chen Guang, Grandma Zhong Xia, and the many pairs of eyes of the audience. All of a sudden, the music played. Snowflakes started drifting around. These were snowflakes generated by the machine at the side of the stadium. A lot of people were mesmerized by the effect of the snowflakes floating around. But then, a voiceover played through the stadium. A man's voice, Zhong Yi, you won't be able to become famous the way you are. Another man's voice, this path is not suitable for you, please go. Back. A woman's voice, you want to be a celebrity with that temper of yours? Who would like you? Ha. Huh. A middle-aged man's voice, John Yi, you're fired. Go pack your things and leave. The lonely snowflakes gently drifted down. Wu Ziqing was stunned. John Yi's parents were stunned. Zhang Xia was stunned. Fan Wenli was stunned. Han Qi's eyes reddened. Just those few lines of the voiceover were enough to stun everyone. Zhang Yi opened his eyes and reached out. He tried to grab some of the snowflakes but was unable to catch any. He sighed, then lightly sang one. Tonight, I saw snow drift through the cold sky. With a cooled off heart, I drifted far away. Chasing you in the storm. Can't tell shadows apart in the fog. You and I in these vast horizons. Can we change? This is what my life has been. Today, I will sing it out for all of you to listen to. He took two steps forward and looked at everyone as he sang. Many times, I've been scorned and ridiculed. But never have I abandoned my ideals. In a fleeting trance. I felt something was missing. Unaware, it faded away. My passion. The choir accompaniment sang, Who understands me? Who can understand him? Which of us here, can understand him? Li Xiaoxian gasped. Flowing time fell silent. Listening to him sing, Amy was dumbfounded. Zhong Yi suddenly sang loudly. Forgive me for always loving freedom and indulging. I'm afraid I might fall someday too. Discarding one's ideals. Anyone can do. Why would I be afraid if it's just you and me? The audience had forgotten how to speak. They had forgotten how to clap. Everyone was just staring dumbfounded at the unstaged Zhong Yi. At this moment, the voiceover began anew. A man's voice, give it up, you won't be able to make it. Another man's voice, hurry up and go back home. A woman's voice, ha, huh, how far do you think you can make it to with what you have? A middle-aged man's voice, you want to say whatever you want to say? You want to sing whatever you want to sing? Do you think you make the decisions around here? Art? Don't talk to me about art. Just hurry up and kick yourself out of here. Let me tell you this, a person like you, no one in the entire entertainment industry would ever take a liking to you. The audience's mood was restrained to the extreme. His mother felt a niggling sense of uneasiness. Zhang Xia and the others also felt like there was something heavy weighing on their chests. They knew that these were the past events Zhang Yi had experienced. But the very next moment, the music soared. The guitar sped up the tempo. The drums also turned up the heat. Zhong Yi's expression changed as he pointed up to the sky suddenly and sang. I am still who I am. Forever singing as I please. Wherever. I go. With that, the stadium erupted. His father stood up from his seat. His mother stood up with tears in her eyes. Wu Ziqing stood up as well. Every one of the audience members started screaming wildly. They had been moved. They had been stunned. Liao Yichi's tears flowed without end. Well done. Teacher Zhong, good on you. Zhong Yi shout sang. Forgive me for always loving freedom and indulging. I'm afraid I might fall someday too. Discarding one's ideals. Anyone can do. Why would I be afraid if it's just you and me? You all can insult me, underestimate, or even scold me. All of that is fine. Just give up on me. 
but I won't give up on myself. Even if everyone in this world discarded their ideals. Zhong Yi suddenly turned to where Wu Zeqing was and looked into her eyes. Discarding one's ideals, anyone can do. Why would I be afraid if it's just you and me? He smiled. And then she smiled. Even if there were only the two of them left on this road. At least I still have you. At least you'll still be right by my side. Chapter 1089, Do you guys really want to keep listening? The audience in the stadium was going crazy. This is Zhong Yi. This is who he is. Zhong Yi. I love you. The clown, you're the best. You still have me. Right, you still have us. We'll walk together with you down this road. Count me in. There's me too. Count all of us in. Why would I be afraid if it's just you and me? I am still who I am. Forever singing as I please. These couple of lines in the lyrics had made everyone's blood surge with passion. This was a song by Beyond. This was a song from Zhong Yi's previous world that could be considered one of the most classic and greatest songs of all. It was called Vast Horizons One. Outside the stadium. In a nearby neighborhood. Hear that? What's that sound? It's going to rain soon. Let's hurry and get back home. Ah, uh, what's this shouting that's coming from that direction? The stadium? Is there a match going on today? That noisy? Why is it so loud? Who's shouting over there? Did you guys forget? That's the recording studio for the King of Masked Singers concert. Damn, what happened over there? I don't know, but it does sound like a lot of screaming. Does it have to be so electrifying? The sky was getting heavier. The dark clouds were growing and rain was drizzling. There was no forecast of rain during yesterday's weather report, so the program team did not full preparations for such an event. They immediately deployed some employees to set up several temporary parasols to cover the equipment. The stadium was not specialized to handle concerts, but as time had been too tight for them to get a proper place, they had to make do with this venue. In the entire stadium, only part of the grandstands facing the stage were sheltered. Meanwhile, the rest of the grandstands and the stage were all in the open air. As many of the equipment was not waterproof, they were forced to take emergency measures to protect them. However, that would only be effective under light rain conditions. But they were really unlucky to meet with such trouble today. The wind started picking up. The rain became heavier too. The audience hurriedly took out their umbrellas and put on their raincoats. It's getting heavier. Quick, go and take shelter. What's with this weather? Some people in raincoats insisted on staying where they were. A lot of the audience members seated in the front ran back a few rows. There was a large zone there where they could take shelter from the rain for a bit. His parents had not brought umbrellas with them today. His mother complained, how could it rain just like that? His father said, the weather reports are getting more and more inaccurate these days. Beside them, Wu Zuching took out an umbrella from her bag. Auntie, uncle, take this umbrella and share it. Then she opened it up and handed it to them. His father said, no, no. His mother did not accept the offer either. Shelter yourself. Wu Zuching smiled and said, I don't need it. If it gets too heavy, I'll head back for shelter. How can that be fine? His mother did not expect Chief Wu to be so polite. Fortunately, Xiao Lu came running over right at this moment. Auntie, I have a raincoat over here. I'll give it to you and go look for another. If there are extras, I'll get more for you. She didn't bother with other people, nor could she care too much about them. But since these were teacher Zhong's parents, she must definitely look after them properly. There was a relationship here, after all. His mother said, Aya. Thank you then, Xiao Lu. Wu Zeqing smiled. That came at just the right time. Let uncle have the raincoat. Auntie and I can share the umbrella. She leaned closer to Zhong Yi's mother and held up the umbrella. His mother reached out to take the umbrella. Let me hold it. Wu Zeqing said, there's no need. You don't have to be so polite with me. Backstage. Recording had temporarily been suspended. 
the singers and program team staff were all looking for a place to take shelter from the rain. Hu Fei asked loudly, how's it looking? Can we still record? Hu Ji ran over and said, it's possible since the cameras are all waterproof, but the instruments and performers are not. With all that rain and wind out there, it's impossible to sing. Fan Wenli looked at the sky. Zhao Chichuan shook his head. I'm afraid this rain won't be stopping anytime soon. Over there, Zhang Xia, Amy, Li Xiaoxian and a few others were all standing under a temporary sunshade tent to hide from the rain. Zhang Yi came up. How many songs are left? Hu Fei was holding an umbrella and said, there's still three or four songs left for the set. We were only slightly more than half done with the concert schedule. There's still a choir that we invited to perform, as well as the group closing song that all of you were scheduled to sing. Xiao Lu returned. Brother Hu, the rain is getting heavier. Hu Fei clenched his teeth and said, let's wait a little longer. After five more minutes. The weather did not look like it would get any better. King of Oddity shook his head and said, we can't sing any more. The weather won't allow us to do so. Zhao Chichuan, flowing time, added, I think we should cut the recording short. They can't play music out there anymore. Furthermore, the rain has already gotten so heavy. How can we still sing? Let's quickly disperse the crowd and get everyone home. Amy sighed, it's true. We can't carry on recording. Zhang Yi looked over at the audience and saw that no one had left yet. Hu Fei said, then, let's wait a while, interrupted Zhang Yi. Hu Fei looked at Zhang Yi and nodded. All right, let's give it another five minutes. Zhao Chichuan frowned and wondered why they still bothered to wait. The weather was clearly not going to clear up. King of Oddity also gave a slight shake his head. Who could sing in this bloody weather? There might be a bit of a shelter in the grandstands, but no place on the stage could shield them from the rain. However, the program team staff did not have any objections to waiting. With Zhang Yi's words already spoken, it was as good as Hu Fei saying them himself. Whenever even Hu Fei could not make a decision on something, he would usually seek Zhang Yi's advice. Soon after, the rain did let up a little but still did not stop. Chen Guang also spoke up, we really won't be able to sing if it goes on like this. Xiao Lu anxiously said, Brother Hu, Director Zhang. Dong Shanshan was holding an umbrella and talking to the audience from the stage at this moment. Would everyone please wait for a bit? I have to seek advice from the program team on how to proceed. At this time, Xiao Lu hurriedly walked up to the stage and whispered some instructions to Dong Shanshan. Dong Shanshan nodded. All right, I understand. Then she looked at the audience and said, I'm terribly sorry, but this sudden downpour was not something that we had anticipated. We were not prepared to handle such weather, so we sincerely apologize on our part. We can't continue recording, so the concert will end here. Please get ready to leave the stadium and remember to give way to each other. When they heard this, many of the audience members started shouting. But why? The rain's not that heavy, it's only a moderate shower. We still want to listen. So few songs have been performed. Can't we have a few more songs? We're fine. Right, we don't want to go. It was so good. Let us have another song. Several dozen audience members were already starting to stream out of the stadium. However, a majority of the audience did not move. They stared at the stage without blinking, some of them sitting in their seats in their raincoats or carrying umbrellas. Dong Shanshan urged, please start exiting the stadium. We're truly sorry about today. Recording will stop here because the musical instruments cannot be played in the rain, so it isn't possible to perform anymore. You all can see for yourselves that the stage is open air. We also did not wish for this to happen. Sing a few more songs. We really haven't had enough yet. I came up from Shanghai just to attend this concert. Just one song would do. Must we end it like this? We don't need any musical accompaniment. Just sing a cappella. All of a sudden, someone led a chant. Petal shower. Petal shower. The clown. The clown. Flowing time. Flowing time. They all chanted the stage names of the contestants. 
the audience was eagerly waiting for them to appear back on stage. This concert had excited them so much that hardly any of them were willing to leave. Dong Shan Shan was out of ideas. We really, from out of nowhere, Zhong Yi came up onto the stage. Hand me the microphone. Dong Shan Shan looked at him and then handed him the microphone. Seeing that he was without an umbrella, Dong Shan Shan wanted to shield him from the rain. However, Zhong Yi fluttered his hand in refusal. He did so because he saw many people in the audience who were still out in the rain. Since they didn't have umbrellas, he didn't want to be shielded by one. The rain was soaking Zhong Yi's shirt. Dong Shan Shan had no choice but to hand the stage over to him and went back down by herself. Facing the audience, Zhong Yi stood in the rain and said, We can't carry on recording. The cameras have already stopped. No one can predict the weather, but we were in the wrong too. Please give me some face and quickly go home. It's too cold out here, and the rain is getting heavier as well. It's a shame about the concert, but, but we really want to continue listening, a middle-aged man shouted. A girl yelled, we're not afraid of the rain. Really? A mother said, my kid loves to watch your show. Can we have a few more songs to listen to? Zhong Yi said loudly, but today's weather. Suddenly, a little girl of around nine years old somehow made her way up onto the stage. She probably came up via the side stairs, which the staff forgot to watch due to the rain becoming heavier. The little girl was holding a kid's umbrella with floral patterns on it and walked straight up to Zhong Yi's side. Zhong Yi was startled by her, not knowing what she doing up here. He was just about to tell her that his place was restricted to non-authorized personnel when the little girl pushed the umbrella toward him. The little girl was very short and trying very hard to stand on her tippy toes to get the umbrella over Zhong Yi's head. Zhong Yi was taken aback by this action and quickly knelt down. When a few staff members saw this, they ran over in panic to lead her away. But Zhong Yi put his hand up at them to stop them from coming over. The little girl finally managed to shield Zhong Yi with the umbrella. Brother, please. Can you please sing a few more songs? I will shield you and not let the rain get on you. The umbrella was very small and could only shield one person at most. In the blink of an eye, the girl's clothes were wet. Zhong Yi asked, then what will we do about you getting wet? The little girl said determinedly, I'm not afraid of that. Zhong Yi took the little girl by her hand and pushed the umbrella back over her head. Do you really wish to keep listening? The little girl nodded vigorously. Me, my parents, and my brother, we all like you. And we also like Sister Petal Shower and Sister Spinach too. Zhong Yi smiled then. He turned to the audience and looked at the stubborn audience members who were still sitting there. He suddenly asked, do you guys really want to keep listening? Yes. 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 In an instant, the shouting thundered. It even drowned out the rumbling of the thunder. Zhong Yi smiled again. Everyone's not afraid of getting wet? No. No. Afraid, my balls. Everyone shouted in unison. Zhong Yi smiled for the third time. He carried the little girl down the stage and returned her to her mother. Then he went back on stage and looked around it for something. Xiao Lu was stunned. Director Zhong, what are you doing? Han Chi also asked, what are you planning on doing? The Miracle Wheels band also said, the rain is so heavy. You. Hu Ji added anxiously, the cameras have already stopped. We're not recording any more today. You don't have to. Stopped recording? Won't be broadcasting this? What did all that have to do with him? The audience was still here. The audience had not left yet. If they are not afraid, why should I be afraid? If they are not leaving, how can I leave? Chapter 1090, Singing Three Songs in a Row Director Zhong What are you doing? We really cannot keep performing in these conditions. The rain's too heavy. How can we sing? Have you gone crazy? Teacher Zhong, you can't really intend to. Backstage, a lot of people were frantically trying to dissuade him. When they saw Zhong Yi grab an acoustic guitar placed there, the program team, contestants, and celebrity guests all had a look of incredulity on their faces. They knew that Zhong Yi really meant to go on stage and perform. 
on this windy and rainy day, he was really going to go on stage and sing. What are you trying to achieve? Why are you doing this? Zhong Yi did not say anything and simply strode onto the stage. By the time he finished setting up the microphone stand, he was soaked from head to toe. Then he started playing the acoustic guitar and a melody floated out. In the midst of the pouring rain, Zhong Yi's voice reverberated through the skies. The first line of his song stunned the crowd. What am I trying to achieve? I'm not trying to achieve anything. He sang loudly one. Inside of my heart, I once had a dream. To make you forget all of your anguish with my singing. Brilliant starry night, who is the true hero? It's ordinary people who inspire me the most. The audience was stunned. Everyone was stunned. The next second, screams came from all over the stadium. He was singing. Zhong Yi was singing. He really did not leave. He really came back on. Zhong Yi sang and played at the same time. No more hate, and no more pain. Now if only throughout the world of man love reigned. Let's use our songs to gain your sincere smiles. And bless you with an extraordinary life from now on. Seize every second and minute of life. Spare no effort chasing after our dreams. Without wind and rain, how can you see a rainbow? No one can succeed at it with just one go. Seize every single inspiration in life. Enthusiastically embrace your beloved friends. Let sincere words, and tears of joy. Ebb and flow and swirl in our hearts. The Miracle Wheels band were all staring with dropped jaws. They swore that they had never heard the clown sing this song before during his rehearsal sessions. When did you write such a song? You can just come up with a song as and when you like. You can just start singing something the moment you open your mouth. Han Chi shouted, Great. Fantastic. Hu Fei suddenly grabbed hold of Hu Ge. The cameras. Are the cameras on and recording this? Hu Ge turned to look at the cameras that were facing the stage. They're on. Two cameras are on. Hu Fei yelled, Turn them all on. All of them. Hu Ge said, All. Hu Fei shouted, Hurry up. Hu Ge immediately said, OK. When the song ended, the applause was thunderous. It was clearly raining. The rain was very loud. The acoustic guitar that Zhong Yi was playing did not have enough volume to be heard in such a noisy environment. Yet the applause was so loud. It was at least twice as loud as when most of the singers performed before the rain. This happened because the audience was moved. Because someone was willing to stand out here in the wind and rain and sing for them. To them, celebrities were all very precious figures. Especially an A-list star like Zhong Yi. They were even more precious than most. Everywhere they went, they would have bodyguards surrounding and protecting them. But Zhong Yi was not like that. He was really singing for them. He was sincerely singing for them. Even if he was drenched by the downpour. Wu Ziqing showed a happy smile. His mother was also very excited. That's how my son is. That's how he is. Wu Ziqing said, your son was born with a special kind of charm. Many people find it odd that others would like a celebrity with a temperament like his. But for me, I think those people who don't like him are odd. Zhang Xie gave a wry smile. What a nice song. Chen Guang was also getting a little pumped up listening to him. The audience was chanting, Zhang Yi. Zhang Yi. Zhang Yi. Brilliant starry night. Who is the true hero? You're the hero today. At least to us, you're everyone's hero today. The next second, the guitar melody switched up. Zhong Yi did not even take a breather for more than a minute. He sang too. Black coffee is a little strong. I just need the lightness of soda. Daydreaming during this heat wave. I dreamed that I became a rainbow. I have the urge to start running. With you here, even falling down is fine. I will chase my dreams without fear. Our sweat records our glory. There are all kinds of characters in a movie. And every one of them has a dream of their own. Negativity on the big screen just isn't shown. I want to hold your hands in the rain. And. Wait. For. The. Rainbow. 
in the rain? Wait for the rainbow. The audience instantly cheered. Zhong Yi pointed at the little girl who came up onto the stage earlier to give him an umbrella and pointed at everyone as he sang. You say I am your superhero. As well as your occasional guest punching bag. I'm perfectly happy to accept this honor. To be the firefly by your side. Ah, oh, Ari. So if I really am your superhero. Let me sing you this love song at this time. Love blossoms with a little understanding. I'll be the hero you're the proudest of. The audience chanted in unison. John Yi. John Yi. John Yi. This was the second song. No, that's not right. Counting Vast Horizons, this was his third song in a row. Further, he was singing in this heavy rain without even taking a break. A few of Zhong Yi's fans felt their hearts ache and cried. Rest for a while. Teacher Zhong, rest for a while. The rain is too heavy. Teacher Zhong. A lot of people were shouting. Hu Fei also said anxiously, quick, go and tell Zhong Yi to take a break. He better not have something happen to him. The physical exertion on a person during a rainy day was very large. To go all out and be singing like the way that he did, even a man of steel would not be able to take it. During the first episode of King of Masked Singers, Zhong Yi had nearly collapsed due to a high fever and cold. At that time, he really gave everyone on the program team a huge scare. However, the very next second, the melody of the guitar in Zhong Yi's hand changed again. He started playing and jumping around at the same time. Once. Twice. Thrice. His playing sped up. The melody sped up. Suddenly, Zhong Yi used a very high-pitched voice that a normal singer would usually not be able to reach and scream sang three. I won't get tired at all. I have danced for three days and three nights. I'll get drunk just drinking soda in this state. Oh. Hu Fei was dumbfounded. Spinach was dumbfounded. All of the audience members were also stunned. But right afterwards, the atmosphere reached a high. A lot of people were pulled along by the rhythm of the music and started screaming and jumping as well. Zhong Yi played the guitar and laughed loudly at the same time, there's no way I'll get exhausted. I wanna dance another three days and three nights. I feel so light that I believe I can fly. All of a sudden, the Miracle Wheels drummer rushed up onto the stage and took his seat. He started playing a beat. The Miracle Wheels guitarist roared with laughter. He could not use the electric guitar in this circumstance, so he grabbed another acoustic guitar and went up on stage as well. Zhong Yi sang loudly. Join in along with me. Jumping from morning till night. You won't lose out being happy. Don't even think to refuse. The stadium hit a fever pitch. Screaming was coming from every directions. Three days, three nights, into the late night, dancing without a stop. Three days, three nights, into the late night, staying up with just music. Three days, three nights, into the late night, all that's left is sweat. Three days and three nights, into the late night. B-A-B-A-B-A. B-A-B-A-B-A-B-A-B-A. -A -A -B -A -B -A -B -A -B -A -B -A -B -A. Zhong Yi shouted at the top of his lungs. The pitch of his voice went higher with every syllable he sang. I won't get tired at all. I won't get tired at all LLL. I won't get tired at all LLLLL. True heroes for exclamation point. Superhero 5 exclamation point. Three days and three nights six. Performing three songs in a row. Zhong Yi left the audience in a state of utter shock. Chapter 1091, please put your hands up and wave them for me. The rain continued to fall. The wind was still blowing. But the atmosphere in the stadium had somehow reached its highest point. Ah. This is so good that I could die. John Yi is so awesome. Where did he get all those songs from? Yeah, how did he write all that? Could he have written them beforehand? Or did he come up with it spontaneously? Damn, surely he couldn't have made that up on the spot, could he? Then why does every line in the songs fit the atmosphere here so well? Who knows? This is what you call genius. I love him to death. A singer like that, a guy like that, how could anyone not like him? John Yi. 
John Yi. John Yi. On the stage. Zhong Yi was already experiencing shortness of breath as he made his way down the stage. However, he did not look like he was tired at all. In fact, he kept smiling even though the raindrops were hitting his face. It was like he was totally unaware of it. Han Qi was getting anxious. Teacher Zhong, rest for a bit. Zhong Yi waved her off and said in a hoarse voice, Do you have water? Yes. Yes. I'll go get it. Xiao Lu ran off to get some water. Fan Wenli came up to him with an umbrella. Director Zhong, you're like this. She gave him a thumbs up and continued, whether it's your singing, personality, or character, I'm really impressed by you. The other singers and guests looked deeply at Zhong Yi. They all knew that recording wouldn't continue anymore, so there was no need for them to perform. The cameras had been stopped, so even if you continued to sing, there wouldn't be anyone other than the 10,000 odd audience members at the venue watching. Was there a need to continue singing? Was there a need to do so much? Zhong Yi was feeling extremely thirsty, and he gulped down three mouthfuls of water. Han Qi and Xiao Lu stood around him with umbrellas as they used towels to wipe his face and hair, wet from the rain. Zhong Yi laughed and said, I'm different from you guys. All of you are better qualified and started at a better position than me. About my matters, old Yao should know them the best. Yao Jintsai was also present today. When he heard that, he laughed and said, back when little Zhong and I were banned, we couldn't get any work and could not even take any commercial appearances. You could say that we were left with no options at all. Do you guys know what we ended up doing? We went to join the crawlstalk and skit competition. At that time, the stage was much smaller than this place that we're at now. There were also much fewer people in the audience, probably around 100 to 200 at most. We knew very well that Central TV might cut our scenes in the broadcast, but we still practiced day and night without rest and took our crawlstalk performance very seriously. Every joke segment was rehearsed and tweaked so many times. You wouldn't know how it felt, but as long as there was a single audience member watching, we would definitely do our best and put on a good show. Zhang Xia was silent. Chen Guang was silent. Liao Yichi, Zhao Chichuan, and the others were also silent. Yao Jinsai laughed and said, so after that time, little Zhong and I changed a lot. Picking what shows to appear on. Acting like big shots. Both of us know very well that we were not qualified to do so. But now, they could do so. They were qualified to be picky. They could behave like big shots if they wanted to. However, the motivation they experienced during those days was something they would never forget for the rest of their lives. When they were at their wit's end, when everyone had left them for dead, when they were faced with so many sets of cold and doubting eyes offstage, someone had actually shouted their names in excitement, cried for them, and cheered them on. It was like a wisp of fire in the ice plains that was so heartwarming. From that, they knew they had not been totally given up on yet and that there were still people waiting for their return. That kind of feeling just couldn't be described with words. It was truly an unforgettable experience for them. During our most difficult times, all of you accompanied us by encouraging and supporting us. So now that you guys wanted to continue listening to us sing, how could we not sing for you? What reasons could we have for not wanting to sing for you? Zhong Yi picked up his microphone and smiled. Then he went up onto the stage again. Looking at his receding figure, Fan Wenli, Amy, and the others suddenly felt in awe of him. The audience was screaming. He's coming. Zhong Yi is coming back on again. He still hasn't left. He hasn't gone yet. Applause rang out all of a sudden. Round after round of applause. Some people even threw aside their umbrellas to clap with all their might. Hearing the applause and seeing the excited crowd, Zhong Yi suddenly thought of many past incidents. He closed his eyes and took a deep breath. Then, he raised his microphone. Zhong Yi crooned one, once again, I drowned in the sound of applause. You looked so excited in front of me. In the dark, the world has seemed to have stopped turning. Our hands are not needed for our hearts to embrace. The audience froze. Is this song written for us? Are you singing this song for us? Suddenly, Zhong Yi walked off the stage and strode toward the audience. 
then he took out some foldable umbrellas and raincoats he found backstage, and opened up one to hand to a female audience member who was sitting there in the rain and constantly shouting Zhong Yi's name. That teenage girl was startled, and she immediately teared up. Teacher Zhong. Zhong Yi handed the umbrella to her and sang, If I get lost in the storm one day. I know that you will heal the pain and allay it. He handed another umbrella to a middle-aged audience member. Perhaps our worlds are always going to be a bit unique. But I know that you will stay with me through the bleak and shrieking storm. The teenage girl covered her mouth and started crying. He walked another two steps before giving out a raincoat to a couple who was here with their child. He did not open an umbrella for himself. He did not put on a raincoat for himself. Zhongyi just sang loudly. Please raise your hands and wave them again for me. Then I will know just where you are standing. Life passes in a hurry. I hope we can share our glories. I hope our dreams will never fail. Pandemonium spread through the crowd. Some of them started crying. Someone raised their hands and waved them about. Followed by a second person. Ten people. One hundred people. One thousand people. Please raise your hands and wave them again for me. Then I will know just where you are standing. Perhaps one day I'll get too old to sing or to walk. But I will still offer you my sincerest smile. All of a sudden, Zhang Xia led the way and walked over as well. Fan Wenli. Liao Yichi. Chen Guang. Amy. Li Xiaoxian. All of them gradually followed as well. They each held an umbrella in their hands and walked toward the audience. Then they handed them to the audience members who were still standing in the pouring rain, and exposed themselves to the weather in the process of doing so. A male fan was overwhelmed by this. No, I can't accept this. But Fan Wenli did not say anything and just gave the umbrella to him. Then. Zhao Chichuan. King of Oddity. And all of the other singers also followed along. Zhong Yi continued singing. Much thanks for going through thick and thin with me. Thank the heavens that I have you to understand me. I'm grateful that we can still smile through our tears. Although we must treasure every single moment we have together. The rain overhead seemed to have stopped. Zhong Yi looked up and found that there was an umbrella over him. He continued walking forward and another umbrella opened for him. With every step that he took, another umbrella opened up over his head. Zhong Yi did not know why, but his hands started trembling and his eyes also reddened from out of nowhere. Fan Wenli, Zhong Xia, Chen Guang, Amy, and the others had come forward and were standing together with Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi sang loudly. Please raise your hands and wave them again for us. Then we will know just where you are standing. Life passes in a hurry, I hope we can share our glory, I hope our dreams will never fail. Please raise your hands and wave them again for us. Let us keep the love burning in our hearts. Perhaps one day I'll get too old to sing or to walk. But I will still offer you my sincerest smile. This was the last song of the day. It was the last song on King of Masked Singers. But this was not the end yet. Believe me, any time you guys need me. I will surely be there. I will definitely be there. Everyone was waving their hands. Everyone was waving their hands for them and shouting their names over and over again. John Yi. John Yi. Fan Wenli. Li Xiaoxian. Zhao Chichuan. Zhong Xia. Chen Guang. This song had elevated the concert to new heights. A single person had made a stadium of 10,000 people wave their hands for him. Chapter 1092, Celebrity Rankings Index Maintenance Completed. John Yi's ranking. The next day. Saturday night. Today was the broadcast of the King of Masked Singers closing concert. Those who did not have the chance to attend the live recording were all waiting at their televisions. They switched their channels to Beijing television and were nervously looking forward to the start of the broadcast. They were anticipating it so much because they really wanted to listen to John Yi, Fan Wenli, Li Xiaoxian, and the others sing again especially since it was a live concert as well as the farewell concert of King of Masked Singers. As some of the singers did not take off their masks to reveal themselves until the grand finals last week, everyone was still left wanting for more. 
They were nervous because everyone knew that there was a sudden downpour in Beijing last night and that the concert venue was in an open-air space. So how could they sing? How did they manage to record? Would they stop the concert halfway through? The show started broadcasting. The singers made their appearances one by one. Sure enough, a light spattering of rain could be seen on television screens halfway through the concert. There was also a very strong wind gusting. Dong Shanshan announced unstaged that recording would be cut short. As expected, why didn't they carry on recording? Uh, it ended just like that? Surely not, right? I haven't heard enough yet. How can this be? Has it really ended? I've been waiting the entire week and they only sang those few songs. It can't be helped. The rain was really too heavy. Right, we have to be understanding too and not blame them for it. However, just when everyone started discussing this and when many of them were about to change the channel or turn off their television, they suddenly heard a singing voice coming from it. It stunned everyone. True heroes. Inside of my heart, I once had a dream. To make you forget all of your anguish with my singing. Superhero. You say that I am your superhero. As well as your occasional guest punching bag. Three days and three nights. I won't get tired at all. I have danced for three days and three nights. Old Jong's home. Ninglan and Fang Weihong were also here today. Watching Zhong Yi on the television playing and singing simultaneously in the rain, they were all stunned. Fang Weihong couldn't help but say, this is really nice to listen to. Ning Lan exclaimed, those songs were all written by him? Zhong Yuanqi laughed and said, Ning Lan, I think there will be a threat to your spot in the Celebrity Rankings Index this year. Hum? Ning Lan blinked and said, surely Zhong Yi couldn't be on such a heaven-defying streak, could he? My popularity gained this year should be quite good. I have taken seven movie projects, and I'm now at second place on the A-list rankings. Jong's popularity ranking is still not updated since the system is still undergoing maintenance. Even if they include all the songs that he sang today, he couldn't possibly jump straight from the bottom two places of the A-list to the front few, could he? No one has ever done that before. Fang Weihong, who also seemed very optimistic about Zhong Yi's chances, said, there was no such precedence before, but that doesn't mean that it won't happen. You can't use common sense with him. At Peking University. Summer break had arrived, but a lot of the students did not go back home. It was not that they were unable to get hold of the bus tickets, but that many of them wanted to stay behind to finish watching King of Masked Singers. At the moment, uproars occurred in many of the dormitories. Many students were screaming one after the other. That was so exciting to watch. Ah. Professor Jong is so cool. I can feel my blood coursing through my veins in excitement. Me too. I had an eargasm. How exhilarating. That was so damn exhilarating. When the last song was performed, the emotions of every single viewer around the country watching on Beijing television reached a crazy high. Much thanks for going through thick and thin with me. Thank the heavens that I have you to understand me. Please raise your hands and wave them again for me. Then I will know just where you are standing. John Yi's fanbase numbers exploded. The most direct indicator was the number of followers on his Weibo, which had already reached an alarming 25 million people. In the few days after John Yi had taken off his mask during the King of Masked Singers Grand Finals, his follower count on Weibo had increased by about a million per day. It could be said that this growth was defying the heavens to the extreme. Zhong Yi, you're fantastic. Teacher Zhong, we should be the ones thanking you. It was you who went through thick and thin with us. It's you who understands us. As long as you're around, we'll raise our hands and forever wave them for you. Right, forever. What an impact. Why wasn't I present that day? Back at home. Zhong Yi was currently on the phone with Hu Fei. Zhong Yi said in surprise, why did it get broadcast? Hu Fei laughed and said, how could we not include such impactful scenes? Zhong Yi said nervously, I thought you stopped recording. We did say so at first. But when you opened your mouth to sing, I quickly got the staff to turn on all the cameras. Hu Fei laughed and said, if this part had been lost, it would have been such a shame. 
Zhong Yi gave a wry smile and said, the musical accompaniment was not clear enough and the noise from the rain was so loud that it affected the microphone's reception. My singing was also just average, so I'm not satisfied with how I did. Hu Fei said, look at how the stadium was at the time. There were so many people who were moved by the performance, and you're still saying that it's only average. Everyone, including me, felt that it was very good. I can guarantee that even if you had recorded the songs in a studio, you would not be able to get such a good atmosphere like we had from the live audience. The musical accompaniment could be improved on and the environmental noise like the rain could be removed, but we won't be able to replicate the same kind of atmosphere and impact it had on the audience. Therefore, this is already the best version there is. Zhong Yi laughed and said, I guess. You're the executive director, so your say is what matters. On the same night. At 12 a.m. Weibo buzzed with activity. It's almost out. Are the latest celebrity rankings out yet? Not yet. I wonder if Zhong Yi's name will be there after the rankings are refreshed today. It hasn't been fixed yet. Didn't they say it would be out by this week? Yeah, it's already Saturday. Why hasn't it been updated yet? How much will Zhong Yi's popularity score increase by? Many of Zhong Yi's fans were waiting at their computers and constantly refreshing the ranking index. They really wanted to know what Zhong Yi's ranking was now. It wasn't only Zhong Yi's fans. There were also netizens from everywhere else. And those industry insiders from the entertainment industry. Everyone was getting really curious because Zhong Yi's performance on King of Masked Singers was simply too shocking. The show had created yet another viewership legend with the published nationwide viewership rating of the Grand Finals live broadcast standing at 3.89% and setting a new record in the process. Coupled with several billion views online throughout the entire run of the show, it could be said that the majority of people had watched the show. Together with the farewell concert, everyone was wondering just how popular Zhong Yi had gotten. At 12.05 a.m. The rankings were suddenly updated. There were exclamations throughout Weibo. The rankings are out. The updated rankings are out. It has been updated. Zhong Yi's name is in there. The rankings have been fixed. Holy shit. Quickly have a look. On the latest Celebrity Rankings Index, Zhong Yi's ranking had vanished from the last two places on the A-list rankings. He overtook one person. He overtook five people. He overtook ten people. Jiang Hanwei. Hua Dongfang. Zhong Yi jumped past all of them in one leap. At this moment, Zhong Yi's name glittered at the third spot on the A-list Celebrity Rankings. There were only two people ahead of him. One of them was a superstar who was ranked first on the A-list and the other was Ning Lan, who was ranked second. He had reached the top of the A-list rankings. Zhong Yi had reached the top of the A-list rankings in the span of one night. He was nearing the S-list heavenly kings and queens in front of him. No one had experienced such an explosive one-time surge in their popularity before. At the level of the A-list celebrity rankings, the difference in the popularity scores that separated each position was enormous. Some people might be able to jump from the E-list to the C-list celebrity rankings overnight, but the popularity score difference for such a jump would probably not even compare to the difference in popularity scores between the last and third to last places on the A-list celebrity rankings. At the level of the A-listers, every step taken was fraught with difficulty. It would require a massive leap in popularity in order to surpass the person ahead in the rankings. As such, before the appearance of Zhong Yi, there hadn't really been any major changes in the A-list celebrity rankings for many years. But now the wolf arrived. On this night, Zhong Yi's ranking moved up by more than 10 spots. The netizens were shocked. Oh my god. Third? He's ranked third in the A-list rankings? Zhong Yi has entered the ranks of the superstars? Holy shit, that was too fast. That was too hecking fast. Damn it! Zhong Yi is really too heaven defying. The difference between an A list celebrity's popularity score can be huge and on a completely different level. A celebrity at the bottom of the A list rankings would at most be considered a big name or big shot. Only the top three A list celebrities are considered superstars. And yet, teacher Zhong reached that spot in just one night? I'm flawed. This is too frightening. 
Teacher Jong has ascended to the thrones of the superstars. How long has it been since he was promoted to A-list? And now, he's almost reaching the top? Ah. The industry was also in a state of shock. They had thought about how Zhong Yi's popularity might surge by a lot, and that it might even be an unprecedented kind of surge. But still, they never expected it to increase by so much. Third in the A-list rankings? A domestic superstar? This was simply unbelievable. China's ranks of superstars had actually ushered in a raffish host. Chapter 1093, The Superstars Crew The next day. Early in the morning. The weather was clear and there were clouds drifting across the sky outside the window. Some people went to bed early last night and did not know about what had happened after midnight. It wasn't until this morning when they woke up that they realized that something big had happened in the entertainment industry. It was already everywhere in the newspapers. John Yi joins ranks of superstars. Third ranked A-list celebrity. Shooting to fame overnight. An unprecedented rise. The popularity score that took the entire ranking system down. John Yi's ban lifted. King of Masked Singers, John Yi's best move. John Yi returns. John Yi's friends offer congratulations. Many in industry speechless and have yet to express thoughts. It was also as lively over on Weibo. What? John Yi rose to third in the A list rankings? Damn, what happened while I was asleep? Congratulations, Teacher Zhong. This is such exciting news. Zhong Yi the Mighty. Teacher Zhong, work harder and move up further, to the S list. Foot, I think it's better to forget about the S list. He only just experienced a breakthrough in his popularity, but it hasn't stabilized yet. Let's wait for Teacher Zhong to consolidate his position first. Only then will he be considered to be among the superstars. This is so awesome. So there are actually so many people who like him. The country was still in a state of shock. Everyone was discussing this turn of events, be it on the television, newspapers, or online. Even in the streets, the discussions were all about Zhong Yi. At his parents' house. Zhong Yi was actually quite calm at this moment. His phone had woken him up early in the morning and it hadn't stopped ringing since. His old classmate, Yuingi, my superstar classmate, how are you? Ha! Huh. Are you poking fun at me? Can I ask you how you're feeling right now? I just feel like sleeping for a while longer. I've been tired out by all that has happened in recent days. You've gotten really popular now. You're the most popular host in the country right now. There has never been a professional host who has ever reached the level you're at now. This has never before happened in the history of hosting either. Haha, ha, you've really done the bunch of us old classmates proud this time, and also brought glory to us broadcast hosts. Whoa, are my contributions that great? Of course, so you should treat us to a meal. Hi, was that what you were really after, woman? Ning lands call, congratulations. Thank you, Sister Ning. Please have mercy on me. You're right behind me in the rankings. Oh, come on. I can't possibly surpass you. You say that. I'm just afraid that you'll suddenly pass me the moment I take my attention off you. I've decided to take on another two film projects this year. The momentum of your popularity is way too strong. I'm still far behind you in terms of our popularity. It's not that great a difference anymore. Are you trying to blindside me and then suddenly deal me a heavy blow? Damn, am I such a person? Did you think you had a good reputation? Ha ha. Liao Yichi. Chen Guang. Fan Wenli. Yao Jiantsai. Dong Shan Shan. Zhong Zhuo. C.I. Shoufang. More than a dozen friends called to offer their congratulations. After a full hour of receiving calls, Zhong Yi was no longer feeling sleepy. He hummed a ditty and got out of bed to wash up. Looking out into the living room, he shouted twice and found that his parents were not home. His mother had probably dragged his father out somewhere to boast. He smiled at the thought of that but was actually already quite used to it. Then he checked the fridge and took out some leftovers to reheat for breakfast. What was different about being a superstar? To him, it didn't feel like there was any difference. 
Just look, he still had to eat leftovers. He was not exactly prepared for this surge in his popularity either. He might seem rather calm now, but he was really not prepared for it. He had suddenly reached third place on the A-list rankings. If this had happened to anyone else, they would also be in for a shock. Thinking back now, Zhong Yi had set a goal for himself this year to see if he could climb up into the A-list rankings. But he never thought he would only need a few months to get there. And who would have thought that he would even make it to third place after just another few months of being on the A-list rankings? He had as good as jumped several rungs, each time further than the last. It was no wonder that the industry insiders and netizens found it difficult to accept, since even Zhong Yi himself was quite stunned by it. At this moment, Rao I mean called. To return a very big favor, old Rao had now taken on the role of Zhong Yi's agent. Although old Rao had quite an unreasonable personality, did many things quite half heartedly, and also possessed a sharp tongue, she still handled many of Zhong Yi's matters diligently. At least, she had never let him down when it came to his work. Old Rao, what are you up to? Zhong Yi laughed. I just finished eating. You're still in the mood to eat? I haven't slept a wink since last night. Rao I mean immediately started scolding, did you have nothing better to do than go on to King of Masked Singers? Why did you have to go and sing? Now that you've become so popular, I'm starting to get all kinds of inquiries. Do you know how many calls I've taken in these past few days? Huh? Over 200. Seven film crews invited you to take part in their productions, eight television stations wanted to cooperate with you on some shows, nine music companies were hoping to sign a contract with you, and 60 plus commercial performance leads came knocking on your door. There were also some other calls which I don't really remember anymore. Zhong Yi hurriedly said, It was hard on you, hard on you. Rao I mean said impatiently, Are you gonna take any of those offers? Not for now. I want to rest up for a period of time first. Zhong Yi said, besides, I haven't thought of what I want to do next, so let's wait it out for now. All right, I understand then. Rao I mean even instructed at the end of the call, don't get any more famous than you already are. It's good enough. Don't overdo it. Zhong Yi didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Eh? Rao I mean suggested, if you're free and have nothing to do, go and scold more people and get into more fights. Make yourself less popular. All right, I'm hanging up. Zhong Yi said, it's only for a while. It'll get better as soon as the popularity dies down. An agent requesting for her celebrity client to not get too famous? To go and scold more people? Get into more fights? What the heck, what kind of requests were those? In the entire industry, perhaps only Rao I mean would say something like that. However, Zhong Yi was not angry about this. Old Rao was never really an agent to begin with. She was just an amateur agent who did things according to the mood she was in. He got Rao I mean to be his agent simply for the reason of protection. He had made too many enemies and offended too many people. If he had appointed someone else to be his agent, Zhong Yi would definitely be worried about them. What if something were to happen or his enemies wanted to take revenge? If that happened, Zhong Yi would have brought harm onto others. But if it was old Rao, he wouldn't have to worry. She had more or less fully recovered from her injuries by now, so not even several dozen people would be able to get close to her. Further, she could help Zhong Yi turn down some work as well. This made things much simpler for Zhong Yi. Otherwise, he would have had to handle everything and answer all the calls by himself. Even if there were 25 hours in a day, it wouldn't be enough, so he could only trouble old Rao with this for the time being. Ring, ring, ring. It was a call from his junior sister. Yang Xu said, Senior bro, do you need me around today? I don't. What are you planning to do? Then I won't go over to your place. I'm teaching shadow boxing now. Don't get into trouble with the Urban Management Bureau one. Ah, okay. Right now, Zhong Yi's team was simply a motley crew of people. The four of them could basically be labeled as the oddest team of people in the entire entertainment industry. The star, Zhong Yi, the publicly acknowledged most wondrous person in the entertainment industry. The agent, Rao I mean, a martial arts grandmaster without a proper job. 
a well-known hooligan of the martial arts world who hopes daily for Zhong Yi's popularity to drop. The bodyguard come chauffeur, Yang Xu, a rash woman who only thinks of making Taiji Fist famous again. Often found giving out pamphlets to the elderly in the closest neighborhoods and asking them to take up Taiji shadowboxing, dealing a blow to the town square dance group that was just starting to get popular. Logistics, Wu Ziqing, the only normal person among all of them. Hi. This was what made up a superstar's crew. Sometimes, Zhong Yi even felt that it would be too embarrassing to speak of this to others. It would be a long road ahead. There was still much left to do. Chapter 1094, Zhong Yi's request for leave. Later that morning. His parents were still not home yet. He watched television. Listened to music. It felt like a pretty good way to spend his time. Zhong Yi was ready to give himself half a month of break and not take on any jobs for the moment. He would just not bother with anything and rest up for a period of time. Every time he had a major breakthrough in his career, Zhong Yi would do this afterwards. It could be said that this was a habit of his, and the media and citizens had also gotten used to this casual attitude of his. Further, now that Zhong Yi had successfully gained entry into the ranks of the superstars, he would need to rest for an even longer period of time. As the saying goes, to rest is to prepare for a stronger challenge ahead. After he had taken a long enough break, he would go back and continue causing a stir in the entertainment industry. He still needed to think of a way to get to the top of the A-list rankings, so how could he not recharge first? Ring, ring, ring. The calls kept coming. There were reporters seeking interviews and advertisers who bypassed his agent to get in touch with him directly to invite him to take some commercial filming. Zhong Yi rejected all of them. He decided to make an announcement on Weibo. Zhong Yi, applying for half a month's leave. I will not be taking any work in this period of time so that I can get some rest. If there are any urgent matters, please contact my agent. After he posted it, Zhong Yi called Wu Ziqing. Old Wu, where are you? I have a meeting today in the suburbs. You're so busy on a Sunday too. Is something the matter? I miss you. What time will you be back from the meeting? It should end at around 3 or 4 in the afternoon, but I need to go back to my parents' place first. They arranged a blind date for me again, so I need to go back to sort it out them. They're still arranging blind dates for you? Have you told them about us yet? I brought it up before but did not mention who you were. I told them that I have a boyfriend and that he has a successful career. I also mentioned that you have quite a good character and are a little younger than me. My mother was quite all right with it and did not say anything, but my father was pretty against it. He did not even ask who you were and just objected to it, so I'll still need to work on him a little. Hi, that's tough. Let me get everything settled here first before I bring you to formally meet my parents. All right, give me a call tonight after you're done with everything. Okay. A blind date? He would have to seize the chance and quickly marry old Wu. That was what mattered the most. After hanging up, he continued browsing through Weibo and was met with a bustle of activity. Countless netizens had replied to his post. Applying for leave again? Pfft, teacher Zhong is so willful. With your popularity soaring, now's the best time to make more money. Why are you applying for leave at such a crucial time? In all of showbiz, only teacher Zhong would do something like this. Ha ha ha, isn't this how he's always been? Not approved. Right, your leave is not approved. I won't agree to it either. Rejected. The reason for your leave request is inadequate. Rejected. Rewrite your application. He he. Quite a number of people started bantering. When Zhong Yi saw this, he didn't know whether to laugh or cry. You guys aren't even allowing me to take a leave of absence. If I don't take some time off to rest and spend time with my girlfriend, she'll run off soon. He posted an update to his request for leave. I've nearly forgotten what my girlfriend looks like. I would like to go and see her, so please approve of my leave. This was a very famous reason to request leave in Zhong Yi's previous world. When this was posted, a lot of the media personnel and fellow industry peers were taken aback. Ah. Zhong Yi has a girlfriend? Who is it? Who is it? 
Damn, this is big news. There was no news about this before though? When did it happen? Suddenly, a lot of netizens started disproving him. Don't listen to his crap. Teacher John just likes to brag and talk nonsense. Ha ha ha, this leave request has really tickled my funny bone. Pfft, Teacher John. Are you really in such a miserable state? You even forgot what your girlfriend looks like? I don't believe it. The issue here is that you need to have a girlfriend first. What is John Yi's criteria for a partner? Right, don't brag anymore. Tell us your criteria and we'll help introduce someone to you. Do you want someone pretty? Long or short hair? Big or small eyes? Teacher Jong, could you be requesting leave to go on a blind date? I'm cramping up from laughing. My sister is really pretty. Let me matchmake the two of you. What are the things you're looking for? Tell us. John Yi's request for leave post had suddenly attracted a lot of attention. He was currently very popular and there was a lot of attention on him. But no one expected John Yi to throw out a poem at the next second. A lot of people who saw it were shocked. The beauty of this poem was simply too intoxicating. John Yi's Weibo, carrying an umbrella, all alone. Pacing up and down this long, long rainy alley on my own. I yearn to meet a girl who is like the lilac, resentful and downbeat. She has all the colors of the lilac, the fragrance of the lilac, the sorrow of the lilac. Wistful in the rain, wistful and halting, she paces down this deserted, rainy alley, holding an umbrella just like me, and just like me she silently trudges, aloof, sullen, and brooding. Silent she approaches, nearing, and casting a glance like a heavy sigh. She drifts past as if just a dream, as if just a hazy dream, downcast. As if a lilac passing through a dream, this woman passes by my back, she silently goes far, farther, and reaches a toppled fence, leaving this rain lane. In the rain's mournful song, her colors wash away, her fragrance dissipates. Gone, washed away, even her eyes that heavily sigh, her lilac lacrimose. Carrying an umbrella, all alone. Pacing up and down this long, long rainy alley on my own. I yearn to meet a girl who is like the lilac, resentful and downbeat. The netizens were dumbfounded at reading it. Damn, he really could just compose a poem on a whim. Yet, this was really, incredibly beautiful. The woman described in this poem was truly beautiful. All at once, the comments blew up. This is the most artistic request for leave that I've ever seen. My heart aches for Teacher Jong. The woman who's like a lilac has already gone far ahead. Teacher Jong, hurry up and chase after her. Approved. Approved. You can take your leave now. Teacher Jong, will allow you to go on your break. Hurry and go. Go for it. A woman who crossed paths and then headed off into the distance had captivated a lot of the netizens. They did not know which unlucky girl Zhong Yi had set his eyes on, but they definitely had to be supportive of such an important encounter of love. Only a few people from the literary circle could not resist criticizing Zhong Yi. Their literary upbringing was clearly much higher than the common folks. Someone from the Writers' Association side, what a good poem. But to use such a good poem in a place like this. Isn't, isn't this too great a waste? A person from the CFLAC1 said angrily, how could the beauty of this poem be so simple? There's clearly a much deeper meaning to it. How could Zhong Yi use something so grand as his request for leave? What a waste of talent. I'm so angered that I laugh. This Zhong Yi. Having all that talent, but using it so carelessly. He pisses me off. One of his poems had once again generated heaps of controversy. Zhong Yi actually understood much better than them that this was not a poem about a girl. It did not just refer to a lilac girl, but more about the vague hopes and desires of a person. But to Zhong Yi, Wu Ziqing was currently all of his hopes and desires. In his eyes, old Wu was that lilac girl. What can anyone do about that? Bite me? Chapter 1095, The Strangeness of the Lucky Halo. In the suburbs. In a conference hall. During the meeting's intermission, Wu Ziqing suddenly overheard the people beside her whispering while holding their cell phones. There were mentions of Weibo, Zhong Yi, poetry, and something about a request for leave. She went online to check. 
the poem Rainy Alley appeared before her eyes. The colors of the lilac. The fragrance of the lilac. A girl who is, like the lilac. She read this poem five times over before breaking out into a grin. A lot of people around her were stunned from reading this poem as well. Her cell phone rang. It was a call from her family. Zitching. Dad. What time will you be back this afternoon? 4 or 5 p.m. All right, drive safe. Noon. Back at home. John Yi's parents called to say that they were at a relative's place and would not be coming home for lunch. John Yi ended up eating leftovers again for lunch. He sighed to himself at the sorry state of things. He looked at his watch and saw that it was still too early for Old Wu's meeting to have finished. Moreover, she still had to go back to her parents' place in the evening, so it would have to be at least 8 p.m. before he could get to see her today. So what should he do in the afternoon? As a matter of fact, this fellow did not really have any hobbies at all. Ever since he'd graduated, he had always been working, day in and day out. Even when he took leave from his work, he did not really know what to do. It's time for the lottery then. Zhong Yi had so many reputation points right now that it was even shocking to him. He activated the lucky halo, upgraded, and chose the lottery draw, one, option to play. He decided to place 1,000 additional stakes to see if he could get any new items. 100 million reputation points were spent just like that. The lottery draw began. The wheel started to spin. Soon after, the needle came to a stop in the skills category region. Go skill experience book, times 1001. Go one? What would I need this for? John Yi was speechless. Had the lucky halo lost its effect? But thinking about it, similar situations had happened too. The luckiness effect of the lucky halo was not 100% effective. Out of a few hundred times, there would be an occasional, ineffective occurrence. So he wasn't too bothered by it. He started to study the Go Skill Experience books as he ate them one by one. When he came to the last Skill Experience book, a familiar looking notification popped up, just as he had expected. He had encountered this before. The Go skill has been maxed out. He was unable to learn it any further. Zhong Yi decided not to play Lottery Draw 1 anymore. Since he hadn't tried his luck in Lottery Draw 2 for quite a while now, he decided to spend another 100 million reputation points on it. He opened the Lottery Draw 2 interface. A familiar looking slot machine appeared. This was the Lottery Draw that required 10 million reputation points per try. If he placed nine additional stakes, that would expend 100 million reputation points immediately. But Zhong Yi did not feel the pinch anymore since he had a ton of reputation points. The draw began. The slot machine started cycling. One by one, the icon slid past the screens. Then it slowed, slowing, and slowing. Zhong Yi's lucky halo, upgraded, was still activated. He did not mind what items he would get from the draw as long as it didn't turn out to be empty. Otherwise, these 100 million reputation points would go down the drain. The slot machine came to a stop. The result came out. Skills category treasure chest, medium. The medium-sized golden chests were about twice as big as the small chests. When he opened them up, the skill experience book inside turned out to be much larger than the ones in the small treasure chests. It seemed that this was the first time Zhong Yi got a skill experience book from Lottery Draw, too. But when he saw the name of the skill experience books, he was dumbfounded. Go skill experience book, times 10. Your sister. It was still go? He immediately gave it a try and flipped open the first skill experience book. The book dissolved into glowing light particles and surged directly into Zhong Yi's mind. He could clearly sense that his skill had leveled up, and there was no system notification to say that it couldn't be learned. It looked like his previous guesses were right. For the lottery draw, 1, S skill and stats category items, some of them would max out at 100, while some would max out at 1000. But in lottery draw, 2, the enlarged skill experience books in the medium-sized treasure chests would still continue to increase his experience. However, that increase would no longer be exponential and the effect lessened the more he ate them. 
the 1,000 smaller Go skill experience books that he had just studied cost the same as the 10 larger ones, at 100 million total reputation points each. But the 10 larger skill experience books clearly did not have as great an effect as when he ate the smaller ones. This was actually quite normal. To cite an example, a weightlifting beginner could easily go from lifting 25 kilograms to 50 kilograms. But to get to lifting 75 kilograms from 50 kilograms, it would only get more difficult. Then, to get from lifting 100 kilograms to 125 kilograms, it would be even harder. Once it got close to human limits, it would almost be impossible to achieve. The great thing about Lottery Draw, too, S prizes was that it could allow the user to continue increasing the skill level even though the base limits had already been reached. It might seem like the growth rate was negligible, but the actual growth was not the same. This was a really important discovery. Stamina? Strength? This meant Zhong Yi could still get to a higher level in those stats. Zhong Yi was rather happy to have gained a further understanding of the game ring. But still, he felt that this skill experience book for Go was a bit of a scam. Oh right, the lucky halo was still activated. Just as he was about to deactivate the reputation point sucking item, he heard a shuffle of footsteps at the door. With a swish, an ad pamphlet was slotted in through the gap at the bottom of the door. He deactivated the lucky halo and walked to the door to pick up the pamphlet. Zwan Women Go Club? Recruiting members? Play for free for two hours by showing this pamphlet? Zhong Yi suddenly realized that there was something going on. Logically, the lucky halo would not usually fail. Moreover, the lucky halo he was using was an upgraded version, so the effects should be much stronger. Even if it had failed to work properly once, it shouldn't happen twice in a row. Further, someone had even handed out a Go Club pamphlet through the door. Could there be some deeper meaning to this? Since he did not have anything to do, he immediately decided that he would head there to have a look. Later that afternoon. Zwan Woman. As it wasn't far away, Zhong Yi slow jogged over so that he could get some light training in as well. But as he got recognized by people three times along the way, he quickly turned into the alleyways to hide from the attention. Very soon, he reached his destination. A traditional air exuded from the Go Club building that spanned two stories. He pushed open the door and entered the building. It wasn't a large place and felt more like a cafe. An old man sat at the reception desk. Hello, young man. Hello. Is this your first time here? Yes. This pamphlet says that I can play two hours for free. Let me take a look, please. Oh yes, you can play for free. It's on the second floor. Clack, clack. He could hear the clink of the ghost stones being played upstairs. Zhong Yi went upstairs to take a look but saw that there weren't too many people at the club. Those who were here were basically just the elderly, so he took off his sunglasses. Since his fan base did not include the elderly, he thought that it would be fine to just wear his surgical mask as he probably wouldn't get recognized by anyone here. If he had been wearing his aviators inside, it would have made him stand out even more. He found a spot where no one was at and sat down. Then he started laying out the stones based on a game record too. Zhong Yi had learned about Go way back then. Of course, he didn't learn it professionally. He only joined those compulsory interest-based classes where they made you learn activities like Xiangqi 3, badminton, and soccer during elementary and middle school. For some reason, he chose to learn about Go back then. It was because of those classes that he had gained a basic knowledge of Go, although his knowledge was just on how to play it. Though he'd read many game records, he still couldn't grasp many of the basic concepts and wasn't exactly interested in the game either. Five minutes. Ten minutes. He sat there by himself. No one came to look for him to play him, nor did he go to anyone seeking to play them. He simply wanted to find out what was going on with the lucky halo today. Suddenly, someone came upstairs. He turned to look and saw an old man in his fifties. He was wearing in a Chinese tunic suit and dressed very smartly. His eyebrows were pretty bushy, and he looked like he had quite the temper. When he arrived, the people in the Go Club immediately stopped playing. Yo! Teacher Changhe! What a rare guest! What brought you here today? 
Did you argue with your daughter again? Ha ha. Or did you get chased out of your house by your wife? The several old men were definitely old acquaintances from the looks of it, bantering the moment he arrived. That old man who was addressed as teacher Chang her scowled and rolled his eyes. You all better keep it down. Do you think I won't slaughter all of you on the go board? Who wants to have a go? Come on, I'll let you have a handicap of three stones. A middle-aged man laughed and said, we wouldn't dare to play against you even if you gave us a handicap of five stones. Who hadn't heard of your great name all those years ago, Chang He Nine Dan? Teacher Chang He did not like what he was hearing. He harumphed, you make it sound as if no one knows who I am now. An old man said in amusement, you have students everywhere, and so many of them are even national players. I'm sure the entire world knows who you are. Does that sound better to you? There's a popular saying that goes, a good man does not harp on past glories. You've been retired for so many years. Why are you still so competitive? Teacher Chang He said with a laugh, but I'm still stronger than the several of you old fogies. You tried so hard all those years ago and still couldn't make it as professional Go players. At most, you're known as dominant players among amateurs. Ninth Dan? A Go Nine Dan? Zhang Yi was taken aback. There was actually such a highly skilled player in this small Go club? A ninth Dan is one of the highest honors in the Go world. Even if one was old or retired, a ninth Dan's strength was still at the level of a professional and would definitely be considered a person of distinction in the Go world. What was such a high ranking person doing here in a small, amateur Go club like this one? Chang He Nine Dan said, I'm not going to continue bantering with you all. I still have something to handle here. Where's old Lu? We arranged to meet at this time, so where is he? Old Lu just left. Ah? I think his wife fell sick. That old fogey. I told him that I had something important to discuss with him. How can he delay me like this? What's the matter, teacher Chang He? Nothing, it's nothing. Chang He Nine Dan was looking pretty unhappy. Where else could he go to find someone at a time like this? Suddenly, he glanced over in Zhong Yi's direction. Eh? Hey? Who's that young man? An old man looked over. We don't know him. He just came in a short while ago, I think he's here to play Go. But he didn't approach anyone to play against and has just been laying out stones from a game record all this while. In this Go club that basically consisted of only the elderly, a young man walking into the premises naturally caught their attention. However, no one went over to interact with him. Chang He Nine Dan walked over to him and had a look at the Go board. His curiosity was piqued and he took a closer look at it. His eyes lit up. Why have I never come across a game record like this one before? Zhong Yi looked up at him and said with a smile, I was placing them down willy-nilly. I forget where I saw it. Of course he wouldn't have come across it before. That was because this game record was from a match between two Go masters from Zhong Yi's previous world. Zhong Yi was just replaying that match. Chang He Nine Dan sat down across from him and scrutinized him, you're a beginner. Zhong Yi smiled. More or less. Chang He Nine Dan asked, how good are you? I'm okay, I guess, Zhong Yi said conservatively. The several old men in the Go club were all amused at this reply. Okay? How confident? Chang He Nine Dan narrowed his eyes. All right, let's play a match. Zhong Yi thought a little. Sure. I'll let you have a handicap of two stones. Come on. Chang He Nine Dan took the white stones for himself. Chapter 1096, Zhong Yi's Blind Date? In the Go club. The atmosphere livened up. Quick, let's go and watch. Chang He is playing. I haven't seen him play Go in a very long time. I'll go and watch as well. Why is he playing against a young man? I don't know. The game began. Zhong Yi was given a handicap of two stones. He did not say anything and just smiled as he started playing his first moves one. Chang He Nine Dan made his move. How should I address you? Zhong Yi played a knight's move too. You can call me Zhong. Chang He Nine Dan followed up with another move. Where do you stay? 
At Kaishiku. Zhong Yi played a diagonal move 3. Chang He 9, Dan's eyebrows jumped as he said, Oh, that's not far away. I live in the area as well. Not bad, you're pretty good. Let me test you further. Clink. Clink. The stones were placed down onto the board very quickly. The two of them were seemingly playing a fast game, taking very little time to think in between each move. As Zhong Yi was given a handicap of two stones, he naturally had the greater advantage and that manifested right from the beginning of the game. However, Chang He Nine Dan was a professional and had even stood at the top of Go World before. By the mid-game, he had gradually clawed back from his disadvantage, exciting the nearby spectators. What a great move. This move is really beautiful. Teacher Chang He is still as skilled as ever. Chang He Nine Dan even chatted as he played. Ha ha. Compared to those past years, I'm no longer as skilled. I'm getting on in age and my mind can't function as fast as before. An old neighbor of his laughed and said, the main issue is that your temper has grown and your play has become less steady as before. Someone who did not agree with that said, but compared to his previous playing style, teacher Chang has attack has become much stronger. An old man had a look at the go board, then said, this young man is pretty good. For an amateur to play so well against Chang He is already quite something. If he puts in more effort and practices, he might even be able to turn professional. That might not be the case. Right, don't forget that he was given a handicap of two stones. The gap between them is still pretty wide. This young man has potential. There were all kinds of evaluations. The first match ended. Without even the need for adding compensation for, Zhong Yi had lost. But Chang He Nine Dan was very happy. That was a very enjoyable game. In recent years, other than professional players, there have rarely been any amateurs who can play so well against me. Zhong Yi smiled. Chang He Nine Dan's interest was piqued. Come, come, let's play another game. I will give you a handicap of two stones as usual. Although Chang He Nine Dan was very familiar with the old neighbors here, he seldom played with them. This was because the difference in their levels was so huge that even giving a handicap would not resolve the issue. He would usually play Go with his disciples instead, or go on internet Go servers to look for his old friends who were professional Go players to be his opponents. But to him, the feeling of playing online by clicking on a mouse was clearly not as good as the real thing. So now that he had met this young man who could compare to him, he naturally would not allow him to leave. They started a new game. Chang He Nine Dan won again. Zhong Yi was not bothered by this either. It was as if he was not being serious at all. However, the others around definitely did not think of it any other way. They thought that this young man had already given his all in order to achieve such results against a former Ninth Dan Go master. After three rounds, Chang He Nine Dan banged on the table and laughed heartily. All right, young man. You'll do. Then, amid everyone's confused gazes, Chang He Nine Dan pulled Zhong Yi toward the exit. Let's go. Come with me. Zhong Yi was stunned. To where? To my place. Are we still going to play? No, we won't be playing anymore. Ha ha. Uncle, I still have something to attend to. Whatever it is that you have, you need to postpone it. I'm depending on you to save the day. Zhong Yi was at a loss for words. Without even knowing what was going on, he had been dragged to the entrance of a courtyard house 5 by the old man. Once inside, he didn't see anyone else in the courtyard and was unsure if the entire place belonged to the old man's household. Very quickly, he was then dragged off into the northern house by the old man. In the house. A middle-aged woman preparing some vegetables looked up, slightly startled. You're back? Chang He Nine Dan said with a laugh, I'm back. Are you preparing dinner? Li Qin Qin looked at Zhong Yi. Is this young man old Lu's son? That's not right. I saw him last year. He doesn't look like that. Chang He Nine Dan waved her off. Don't talk about that old Lu. He'd too unreliable, standing me up at the Go Club. There, didn't I still manage to find this young man at the last minute? We even played two rounds of Go together and I found out that he's quite good. I would consider him to be one of the better amateur players around. 
It's just a shame that he's a bit old. If he were 16, 17 years old, I would definitely have taken him as my disciple. Li Qingqing grumbled, you're always doing things like that. Look at him. He doesn't even know what's going on and you've dragged him here. You're really something. Zhong Yi gave a wry smile. Auntie, what is going on? Li Qingqing apologized, child, please go back. This has nothing to do with you. Why are you making him leave? Chang He Nine Dan waved her off. Never you mind. Our daughter will be back soon. Just make dinner. I'll take charge of this myself. Li Qingqing didn't know how to react. You do that. Chang He Nine Dan said, So what if I do? I just dislike that guy our daughter found for herself. Li Qingqing shook her head and said, You don't even know who he is. Isn't it enough knowing what his job is? Chang He Nine Dan grunted, Anyway, I won't agree to it. I'll definitely foil her plans. Zhong Yi was confused by what was going on. Chang He Nine, Dan's next line scared the living daylights out of Zhong Yi. Kid, when my daughter gets back, I'm arranging for you two to have a blind date. Do have a good chat with her. What? A blind date? Why would I have a blind date? Zhong Yi was floored. I already have a girlfriend. Chang He Nine Dan said, Uh huh, that's fine. My daughter definitely won't have eyes for you anyway. Zhong Yi was floored again. Uncle, why doesn't that sound right at all to me? Li Qingqin blinked. Young man, what's your job? Zhong Yi took off his surgical mask. Li Qingqin said curiously, Why do you look a little familiar? Chang He Nine Dan looked at him and nodded approvingly. MHM, your looks are average, but you're classy. Otherwise, why would there be a saying that those who play Go don't lack for class? So what do you do for a living? Man, you two really don't know who I am? Zhong Yi had to nonchalantly say, I'm a teacher. Li Qingqing probed further, what subject do you teach? Zhong Yi said, mathematics. A teacher? That's not bad. Chang He Nine Dan nodded and said, you even teach mathematics? No wonder you could play Go so well. Mathematics and Go are interrelated. I know some math professors from Peking University who are also quite good at Go. Bro, I am from Peking University. Li Qingqin studied Zhong Yi, then said, it's just that he's too young. Zhong Yi made to leave. I really can't do this, so I'll be leaving. But Chang He Nine Dan grabbed him. Get back here. Do you know how beautiful my daughter is? Huh? Let me tell you this. If you leave now, you'll regret it forever. You are a Go player as well. Don't you know the traditions of our Go world? In times of trouble, aid arrives from all over. You must know that, right? Sit down. No matter what, you must have dinner before you leave. What if, and I'm saying what if, my daughter really likes you? Then that would be a blessing that you've earned through your previous eight lifetimes. Of course, that likely won't be the case. Beaming with joy, he could not help but continue, you do not know how outstanding my daughter is. She is beautiful, she works as. In the end, Zhong Yi was persuaded to stay. Or rather, he had been held back by force. Zhong Yi was starting to feel ill at ease and was almost in tears. I'm having a blind date? If this gets out and old Wu learns about it, I'll die without knowing how I died. Are you trying to get me into trouble? This lucky halo is really too much. I've totally been scammed. This is simply, all of a sudden, footfalls came from the entrance of the courtyard. Li Qingqing's eyes lit up. Our daughter is back. Chang He Nine Dan gave Zhong Yi a wink and said, perform well and act natural. When you see what my daughter looks like in a while, don't get too shocked. She's really beautiful. The footsteps were getting closer and closer. The silhouette of a person was visible in the courtyard. Li Qingqing went up to her with a smile. You're back? Chang He Nine Dan asked, where did you park your car? The woman smiled and said, I parked it at the entrance of the alley. Then, when the woman spotted Zhong Yi inside the house, she was stunned. When Zhong Yi saw the woman standing outside the house, he was stunned as well. Holy shit! Chapter 1097, This is my boyfriend. 
in the courtyard house. The two of them stared at one another and saw the shock in each other's eyes. Zhong Yi could not have expected that the woman who came in would turn out to be old Wu even if he were told this a hundred times over. What was this? What was going on? Zhong Yi's jaw dropped. Wu Chang-he patted Zhong Yi on the shoulder and pointed at the woman who just came in. With a smile, he introduced, this is my daughter, Wu Ziqing. What do you think? She's good, right? Ha ha, look at you, you're all dumbfounded at seeing her. I was just warning you a moment ago. He was clearly very pleased and proud, thinking that Zhong Yi had been stupefied by his beautiful daughter. My daughter is a civil servant. She's an official, and an important leader at that, ha ha ha. Guess which organization she's from. Hum? A. Wu Chang her asked again, guess. I'm sure you won't be able to guess. Zhong Yi didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Guess? I won't be able to guess, my ass. We've known each other for a long time. Wu Chang He did not even wait for Zhong Yi to guess as he simply announced the answer. Ha ha, my daughter is currently an executive at the SARFT. As for what position she holds, you two can talk about it in detail afterwards. I won't go on further about it. Then he looked at Wu Ziqing and said, My daughter, this is little Zhong. A young and promising man who can play Go as well as him at his age is rarely seen. He's considered quite outstanding when it comes to the ranks of the amateur players. I only met Little Jong by chance today and played a few games with him. It felt great playing against him. Although he paled in comparison to me, and I beat him by quite a large margin even though I gave him a handicap of two stones, he was still quite outstanding. Oh, and can you guess what his job is? Take a guess. Play Go? Just met each other? Wu Ziqing smiled and said, what's his job? A teacher. He's a university professor. Wu Chang-he laughed and said, what a good job that is. Can you guess what subject he teaches? Hum? Wu Ziqing said, Chinese. Wu Chang-he shook his head. Nope, he teaches mathematics. Zhang Yi wiped his sweat away and said, about that, I, Wu Chang-he was an impatient man. Don't be so wishy-washy. Quickly shake hands and get to know each other, hurry. Shake what hands? Zhong Yi did not know what to say anymore. It was Wu Ziqing who put out her hand first, in a gentle manner. Hello, teacher Zhong. Zhong Yi forced a smile. He had no choice but to shake her hand in return. Hello. Li Qingqing pulled her daughter into the house. Don't stand out here. Let's talk inside. Ziqing, how long ago was it since you came back home? You should come back to visit us more often. I'm too busy at the office and can't get away sometimes. Wu Ziqing glanced at Zhong Yi and said, feel free to sit and make yourself at home. A. Eh? Their daughter's attitude wasn't too bad. It seemed like her attitude had changed. Li Qingqing looked at her daughter with great surprise. Wu Changhe was quite happy as he thought that his daughter would be very resistant to the idea of this blind date. That's right, have a seat. Make yourself at home and don't stand on ceremony with us. Sweat started beading at Zhong Yi's forehead. All right. The atmosphere was very awkward. At least Zhong Yi felt that way. So this is your father? So this is your mother? So this is your house? Holy shit. Only now did he realize what had happened, and it wasn't that the lucky halo that was ineffective. Instead, it had, coincidentally, helped him to meet his future father-in-law. Further, as luck would have it, he was dragged along by his future father-in-law who needed him to step in for someone else to go on a blind date with his daughter. Thinking about it now, he remembered that Wu Ziqing had mentioned on the phone that she would be going back to her parents' home in the evening as her father had, arranged another blind date for her but he could never have expected that the man who came for the blind date would turn out to be him. Just what the heck was this? This was way too dramatic. Zhong Yi really was not mentally prepared at all. If he knew that he would be coming to Wu Ziqing's home today, he would have bought things and gotten some gifts no matter what. He had never expected that his first time visiting old Wu's home would happen under such circumstances that would leave anyone at a loss. The four of them sat down. Li Qingqing brewed a pot of tea. Come, have some tea. 
I'll go make dinner. Wu Changhe said, yes, just chat among yourselves. Don't worry about us. Even though he said that, he did not move away and continued to sit beside them. Wu Ziqing looked at Zhong Yi and said with a smile, you can even play Go. Zhong Yi coughed and said, I learned a little when I was in school. Wu Changhe added, he's very good. Zhong Yi immediately said, no, no. It's just a hobby and I'm only an amateur. Look at little Zhong. He's so modest, Wu Changhe praised. Li Qingqing rolled her eyes at her husband. Don't disturb them. Come and help me with dinner. Wu Changhe said, you do it. I want to have a little chat with the young ones. Auntie, why don't I come and help you? Zhong Yi swiftly stood up. Li Qingqin immediately smiled and said, no need. You two can carry on talking. The food has already been made and dinner will be served in a bit. Frankly, old Wu's character was closer to Li Qingqin's. She was gentle and took after her mother in the looks department, with their eyes and nose looking exactly alike. Of course, she also inherited some behavioral traits from her father. For example, she was quite authoritative when it came to work, like him. Old Wu might be gentle, but she was never meek. Before long, dinner was ready. Wu Ziqing went to help her mother bring the dishes out. Wu Changhe asked Zhong Yi in a low voice, how is it? My daughter's not bad, eh? Zhong Yi nodded firmly. She's really good. The dishes were served. Wu Changhe said loudly, actually, my daughter cooks very well. Even her mother cannot compare to her culinary skills. She can make any kind of dish and they'll all be delicious. Li Qingqin said with a laugh, if you don't like to eat something, don't eat it. Wu Changhe laughed heartily. How can that do? Come, little Zhong, try your auntie's cooking. Oh yes, what do your parents do? Zhong Yi sat up straight and said in a serious tone, my parents are ordinary workers. Li Qingqin said, um, that's good. The labor workforce consists of the most honorable people. Wu Changhe nodded. In fact, we're just an ordinary family as well and are not fussy about such things. We're not insistent on looking for someone who is a government official. Or someone rich. Or require them to be from a family of comparable status. Our family does not have such a mindset as we are very casual people, you know. He looked at Zhong Yi and said, we're mainly looking for someone who has a good character and a stable career, like being a teacher. Then, of course, my daughter has to like him as well and they should share something in common. That's all that matters. Zhong Yi did not dare utter a word. Wu Ziqing did not show much of an expression and continued to eat. Wu Changhe looked at his daughter. My daughter, what do you think of little Zhong? Wu Ziqing nodded. He's quite good. Li Qingqin was taken aback. What do you mean by he's quite good? I'm quite happy. Wu Ziqing smiled. Li Qingqin gasped in surprise. She felt that her daughter was behaving differently today. In the past, whenever she had a blind date, she would not even turn up to meet the person. When it got unavoidable and she had no choice but to meet them, she would always come up with some excuse, like being needed back at the office, before leaving quickly. So why now was she inviting little Zhong to have a seat and telling him to make himself at home? She even said things like how she was happy with him. This had never happened before. Did the sun rise up from the west today? Wu Changhe was also very surprised. Oh. Then, there's a chance to progress further? Wu Ziqing smiled as she scooped some food for both her parents. She said, Dad, you really know how to choose someone. From a sea of a billion people, even if you narrow down the range to only Beijing, there are still more than 10 million people to choose from. In the end, you just had to bring the most unlikely guy back here. Hum? Li Qingqin blinked several times. What do you mean by that? Wu Changhe was also confused. Wu Ziqing pointed at Zhong Yi and said, the two of you really don't know who he is. Zhong Yi gave a hollow laugh. Wu Changhe said, I know. His little Zhong. The elderly couple really did not watch much television nor paid any attention to the matters surrounding the entertainment industry. Li Qingqin suddenly stared at Zhong Yi. I found him somewhat familiar right as he came in. 
It's, it's like I've seen him somewhere before. Wu Ziqing put down her chopsticks and said with a smile, then let me reintroduce him to you. The gentleman before you is indeed a university professor. That's not false. It's also true that he teaches math. But the two of you definitely do not know that he holds a title at Peking University, and that he is an associate professor in the math department. Li Qingqing was startled. Peking University? Didn't you used to be the vice president of Peking? Wu Changhe stared with mouth agape. Associate professor? How can there be such a young associate professor at Peking University? Wu Ziqing continued, at the same time, he's also a lecturer in the Chinese department at Peking University, and holds the title of visiting associate professor at Media College. He's as real an academic as you can get. She then paused when she saw her parents' stunned faces. She added, by the way, he still has some other identities as well. For example, he's a calligrapher, a famous radio host, a famous variety show director, a famous documentary director, a famous singer, a musician, an actor, a famous poet, a famous author, a lawyer, and so on and so forth. Wu Chang had jumped to his feet. Li Qingqing asked in surprise, th the two of you already know each other? They had figured out who this man was. Someone who held all these titles in all the nation, there could only be one. The next moment, Wu Ziqing held onto Zhong Yi's arm very naturally and introduced him calmly to her parents, this is Zhong Yi, my boyfriend. Li Qingqing opened her mouth wide. Ah? Wu Chang her panicked. What did you say? This is your boyfriend? Li Qingqing didn't know whether to laugh or cry. They finally understood why their daughter had said those things that didn't make sense to them earlier. From the millions of people in Beijing, Wu Changhe had actually dragged his daughter's real boyfriend whom he had always objected to to their home for a blind date with his daughter. What was the damned probability of that? Wu Changhe nearly vomited a mouthful of blood. Chapter 1098, I will give you a handicap of two stones. This was too dramatic. And it was too unbelievable as well. How could there be such a coincidence? Even in television dramas, there wouldn't be such a hecking coincidence. In an instant, Wu Changhe flew into a rage as he banged on the table and pointed at Zhong Yi. So you're the rascal that duped my daughter. You still have the cheek to sit here? Huh? Zhong Yi sat there in a daze. Huh? Didn't you tell me to make myself at home? Wu Changhe said furiously, what makes you think that this is your home? Go back to wherever you came from. Get up, get up right now. Zhong Yi wiped his sweat away and stood up obediently. Wu Changhe pointed at him and said, You got me good, you rascal. Did you plan all of this? You knew that I would be going to the Zhuan Woman Go Club today? Did you go in advance to lie in wait after my daughter tipped you off? Then insist on following me home, leading to this situation? Huh? Was it you? Feeling wronged, Zhong Yi said, Bro, no, uncle, I didn't even know where you lived and old Wu has never even mentioned to me who you are. So how could I possibly know that you were going to the Go Club today? And it just so happened that Uncle Lu's son whom you were looking for did not show up? It's not like I'm a fortune teller or something. Besides, I did not insist on following you home. It was you who dragged me here. I didn't even know what was happening. Wu Changhe said angrily, you're still denying it. But it was really you who dragged this young man here, Li Qingqin spoke fairly. When little Zhong found out that he was here for a blind date, he even wanted to leave. But you blocked the door and refused to let him go. Wu Changhe didn't say anything. It was clear that this was just a coincidence. Li Qingqin muttered to herself, could it really be fate? Wu Changhe yelled, what fate? Wu Ziqing smiled. Dad, let's eat for now. Then she pulled at Zhong Yi for him to sit down and continue eating. Wu Changhe said, Do you think I still have an appetite? But Wu Ziqing was still as calm as ever. She even gave some food to Zhong Yi. Try this. My mother is also very good at making chicken wings. She taught me all my culinary skills. Oh. Zhong Yi had a taste and said, Um, delicious. Wu Changhe shouted, I won't agree to this anyhow. I won't allow it. Keep it down. Li Qingqing smacked her lips and said, Little Zhong has come as a guest. 
Besides, after all's been said and done, you are the one who dragged him to our place. Wu Changhe quibbled, I was deceived by him. Wu Ziqing looked up. Dad, can you sit down and eat for now? We'll return to this after dinner. We can't solve anything on an empty stomach, don't you think? Wu Changhe sat down angrily. But he did not take another bite of food as he was not in the mood to eat any more. He had found Zhong Yi to be pretty pleasing to the eye before this. After all, there weren't that many young people who would put in the effort to play Go. But at this moment, Wu Changhe found Zhong Yi to be very unlikable no matter how he looked at him. He wished that he could grab a rolling pin and chase him out of the house. Wu Ziqing's mother did not have any negative feelings for Zhong Yi. On the contrary, she seemed to be quite interested in him. Li Qingqing looked at him. Little Zhong, the two of us don't usually watch television and couldn't recognize you just now, but we've heard a lot about you on more than one occasion. Your reputation precedes you, so I was really curious about you and have always wanted to meet you. But I never expected that we would meet under such circumstances. Zhong Yi said respectfully, it's an undeserved reputation that was given to me by the public. Auntie, I've actually wanted to pay you a visit for a long time, but there hadn't been an opportunity to do so. If I knew that I would be here today, I would have brought something along. I feel bad that I didn't get gifts. Li Qingqin asked, how many people are in your family? Zhong Yi said, there's only my parents and me. You don't have any siblings? I'm an only child. How did you get to know my daughter? The first time we met was on a plane. Old Wu invited me to teach at Peking University when she was still the vice president. That was quite a while ago. Li Qingqin blinked. How long have you two been together? Zhong Yi coughed and said, about a year. We didn't even know about it. Li Qingqin gave her daughter a look. Wu Ziqing laughed. How would I dare let you two know when dad is like this? Li Qingqin smiled. That's true. Wu Changhe raged and addressed her by name, Li Qingqin, whose side are you on? Li Qingqin replied, I think little Zhong is quite good. I don't know much about the entertainment industry nor do I know any of those celebrities. But I've still heard of little Zhong's name many times before. Even though he is young, he has many accomplishments. Moreover, I heard that little Zhong helped out a lot with little Mo's and little Chubbs, fat sis, companies. It's all because of his help that their companies managed to do well. Didn't they mention that during our last meal together? They were especially thankful to Little Zhong, saying that if not for him, their companies would have gone bust. Little Zhong has given his best and really done a lot for our family. Zhong Yi was extremely touched. He did not expect that Wu Ziqing's mother would actually speak up for him. Wu Changhe said angrily, I'm telling you, I will declare this first, I will not accept this, definitely not. So what if he is very accomplished? No matter how accomplished he is, he is still someone in the entertainment industry. Don't you know what sort of people are in that industry? There are hardly any good people in there. That industry is just a messed up place. The age difference and earnings are both not issues here. But no matter what, she mustn't get married to someone in the entertainment industry. Are you trying to push our daughter into a fiery pit of suffering? Wu Ziqing smiled. Then you can think of him as a university professor. I can't do that. Wu Changhe said, that is not his main career. Wu Ziqing said, aren't you making things difficult for me this way? When I said that I found someone, you told me that you were not fine with it. All right, now that you've brought someone back and I accepted him, you're telling me no again. Dad, I can make my own decisions and know what I'm doing. If it's someone I like, no one can talk me out of it. Wu Changhe said angrily, why are you so naive? Don't you know what kind of reputation this Zhong Yi has? His character is already questionable. How can you marry a person like him? At this, Zhong Yi could no longer just listen quietly. Zhong Yi's eyebrows jumped as he interrupted, Uncle, I won't say anything if you criticize me on other matters. But if you say that my character is questionable, I won't accept it. Li Qingqin looked at Zhong Yi in surprise. Wu Changhe had a bad temper, but so did Zhong Yi. There were issues that he could back off on. There were issues that he could give in to. But some things, he had to speak up when something needed to be said. 
Wu Chang He stared at him. You won't accept it. Zhong Yi said slowly, it's not that I don't respect my elders. But if you say that my character is questionable, I must definitely take it up with you. I can't pretend that I didn't hear it. The two of them immediately started to quarrel. They had quite an exchange of words, but neither of them was willing to give in. Li Qingqing quickly mediated by saying, there's no problem with little Zhong's character. He saved a lot of people during the plane hijacking incident back then. Didn't you also say it just now? That he plays Go exceptionally well. You've said that those who can play Go well never have bad characters. Wu Chang He sneered, he plays well? You really believe the words that I casually said? By that skill of his and me giving him a two-stone handicap, I can still beat him by six points and above without needing to rack my brains. His Go skill is so lousy. How well could he possibly play? Judging by his Go technique that was full of rashness and unsteadiness, it would be a wonder if his character can be good. Wu Zuching put down her chopsticks and wiped the corners of her mouth with a napkin in an even manner. Enough. Little Yi, let's go. Li Qingqing said, stay a while longer and eat more. Wu Zuching smiled and said, if we continue eating, these two will soon start a fight. Little Yi and I will go back. However, Zhong Yi was not about to leave just yet. That won't do. We have to clear up this matter about my character first. Uncle, I can sense that you're deliberately targeting me. Wu Chang He couldn't help but laugh. You still don't want to admit that you play a lousy game of Go? Zhong Yi said, does that mean that a person who can play Go well will automatically have a good character? Of course. Go is a kind of self-cultivation. Those who exploit others by taking advantage of the situation and people with questionable characters would never be able to play it well, Wu Chang He grunted. Zhong Yi nodded. All right then, let's use Go to sort it out. We'll play another match. Are you fine with that? Wu Chang He was amused. You still want to play against me? You're far from as good as me. Even if you practiced for another 50 years, you still won't be a match for me. You couldn't beat me even if I gave you a handicap of two stones. However, Zhong Yi's next line stunned everyone in the house. Zhong Yi said, this time around, let me give you a handicap of two stones. There was a go board with specialized seats in the house. Having said that, Zhong Yi walked right over and sat down. He took the white stones one and looked at Wu Chang He. Go ahead. You're giving me a handicap? Of two stones? Wu Chang He nearly burst out laughing. Li Qingqing gave a bitter laugh. Little Zhong, your uncle here was ranked as a ninth Dan in Go back in his day. Zhong Yi smiled and said, Auntie, I know that. Wu Chang He laughed in anger. He sat down heavily on the side of the black stones. All right, you think that you can beat me just because I didn't play seriously just then? Ha ha. Zhong Yi said with a smile, what a coincidence. I wasn't playing seriously either. The atmosphere became really tense. The conflict between these two escalated. Li Qingqing knew that she could not dissuade them, so she did not say any more and spectated. She was no stranger to Go. Although she was not good at playing, she still knew how to watch a match of Go. It was the same for Wu Zuching. She quietly walked to the rear of Zhong Yi. She understood Go as well, of course. Wu Chang He didn't try to be polite nor have the bearing of a one-time ninth Dan professional player. He grabbed two black stones and slapped them down on the Go board with a sneer. You're giving me a handicap of two stones, right? Good. Let's see how you're going to play. Li Qingqing frowned. Chang He, what are you trying to do? Wu Chang He said, he was the one who spoke arrogantly first and gave me a handicap of two stones. I'm just abiding by his wishes. He said to Zhong Yi, come, let me see what you look like when you get serious. Taking the white stones, Zhong Yi's expression had already changed. It was a completely different look from the way he was while at the Go Club in the afternoon. It was as though he had totally become another person now. Clink! Zhong Yi placed his stone. Wu Chang He glanced at him as he laughed and placed his stone too. Knight's move. A move followed. Horizontal stretch 2. Placement 3. Another knight's move. Followed by another move. 
Extension 4. As he played, Wu Changhe kept mocking, what lousy moves. Do you even know how to play? You even want to make a diagonal move over here? What's the point of doing that? Have you ever seen any professional players play like that? You're a total amateur. But gradually, Wu Changhe's words lessened until he did not have anything to say. Li Qingqing was stunned. Wu Ziqing suddenly smiled. That diagonal move that Zhong Yi made just now had made Wu Changhe break out in a cold sweat. Holy shit! What kind of move was that? This way of playing had rarely been employed by anyone in the past. Wu Changhe's expression changed. Two hours later. Their match lasted a full two hours. Zhong Yi placed the last stone down with a loud clink. Wu Changhe's face had turned green from anger. How could that be possible? Just how could that be possible? Li Qingqing also looked at Zhong Yi in disbelief. He lost. Wu Changhe had actually lost. Chapter 1099, Arranging a Battle Against His Future Father-in-Law. In the house. The three of them were stunned by Zhong Yi's go skill. You won? How did you manage to win? Nowadays, Wu Changhe was admittedly no longer that commandeering Changhe Nine Dan from 20 years ago. His go skill had regressed and he was already way off from the peak of his prowess. Go might seem like it was a game that many middle-aged people and the elderly played. But in fact, the top players in the world were all young people. At least, there weren't many that were past the age of 40. However, if one used to be an elite player in the Go world, they would still be an elite player now. Even if their skills had regressed, it would still not be easy to beat them. They were still regarded to be at the professional level and definitely not just at the level of those who had recently turned professional. Even if Wu Changhe had underestimated his opponent by not being serious at the start, this should still not have happened. It still did not make any sense at all. Giving a handicap of two stones? And he still won? For a professional Go player, this was as good as demolishing your opponent. Because for a professional Go player, there shouldn't be talk about giving handicaps at all. Although there was a difference in each person's skill, the difference would never call for giving a two-stone handicap. What was the difference indicated by two stones? That would probably be the difference between a high-level amateur and a low-level one, or the difference between a professional Go player and a high-level amateur Go player. Li Qingqing said in astonishment, Little Zhong. Why your Go skills are so advanced? Wu Changhe angrily banged on the table and stood up. How devious! You rascal, you're too devious. So you were only pretending this afternoon when we played each other? You were only trying to lower my defenses around you. Zhong Yi said, in any case, I've won. Wu Changhe said angrily, what do you mean you won? If I had known you were at the level of a professional Go player, I would have played properly against you. I wasn't being serious at all just now. Zhong Yi spread his hands. It's your problem that you were not serious. I still won anyhow. You despicable rascal. Wu Changhe raged. You did that on purpose. You must have done that on purpose. Moreover, do you know how many years it has been since I've dabbled in a handicap game? That was a sneak attack. A sneak attack. Zhong Yi rolled his eyes. Wu Ziqing said with a laugh, Dad, are you a sore loser now? Wu Changhe stared with eyes wide. Me? A sore loser? Ha ha, what a joke. If I were to play him seriously, would I possibly lose? My daughter, you're looking down a little too much on your father. At just the mention of my name in the Go community, who wouldn't be afraid of me? If this rascal didn't pull a fast one on me, he wouldn't have won even if I gave him a handicap of five stones. Five stones? Give me a handicap? Ha ha! Zhong Yi sneered. Li Qingqing also rolled her eyes at her husband. All right, enough with your bragging. You think that I was bragging? Huh? Wu Changhe said exasperatedly, look at this boyfriend that our daughter found. Haven't you seen? He's so devious. I will never approve of him. She can look for any other person, but she must never find a boyfriend like him. He has a questionable character. Let me say this again, his character is too questionable. 
Li Qingqin smacked her lips and said, he played against you fair and square, and even gave you a handicap of two stones. What do you mean by his devious? The way I see it, it's your skill that has dropped. You were not a match for him. Wu Changhe was getting annoyed. I wasn't playing seriously. If I had, he would surely have been scared to death. Wu Zeqing smiled. All right, all right, you weren't being serious just now. She pulled at Zhong Yi. Let's go. Dad, Mom, we'll be leaving now. Wu Changhe stopped them. He pointed at Zhong Yi and said, What's the matter? Running away after you've resorted to dirty tricks? Don't run away if you are so good. Li Qingqing tugged at her husband. That's enough. Zhong Yi had wanted to leave with old Wu, but when he heard that, he stopped in his tracks and turned around. I won't leave then. If there's anything you're unhappy about with respect to the game, you can set the rules and I'll accept them. Wu Changhe laughed furiously. All right, kid. You've got balls. Wu Zeqing pulled at him. Little Yi. Wu Changhe said, come on, let's battle it out. Zhong Yi said, let's do it. Wu Changhe said loudly, come on then. Zhong Yi said, all right. However, how could Li Qingqin and Wu Zeqing let them play against each other? These two were already on the verge of fighting. No matter who won, it would still cause a fallout. The two of them hurriedly tried to stop them. Li Qingqin pulled her husband away and said, You're a good player, all right. You're a really good player. Wu Changhe fumed, he couldn't beat me in the first place. Zhong Yi was now unhappy. But I already did. That's because you resorted to dirty tricks. Wu Changhe said angrily. Wu Zeqing also held Zhong Yi back. She didn't know how to react and said, Why are you trying to argue with my dad? Let's go already. She dragged Zhong Yi out to the courtyard. In the end, the two of them continued to argue from either side of the door. Wu Changhe shouted, Get back here. Let's play another match. Zhong Yi rushed back into the house. All right, I'm up for it. I'll give you a handicap of three stones this time. No need. How about I give you a handicap of four stones? I'll give you a handicap of five stones. I'll give you a handicap of six stones. I'll give you a handicap of ten stones. I'll give you a handicap of twenty stones. Eventually, the handicap went up to two hundred stones. The two of them started talking big. In Go, each player would have at most 181 stones to play, so how could they possibly give a handicap of 200 stones? They were basically just bragging to the skies. Li Qingqin was floored. You two are really something. Finally, Wu Zeqing managed to pull Zhong Yi away. Just before he stepped out of the courtyard house, he heard Wu Changhe shout, If you're that great, let's battle again tomorrow. I'll show you what Go is all about. Are you up for that? Zhong Yi turned around as he was being dragged off. Sure, I'll be back tomorrow. Wu Changhe said, you're a whelp if you don't show up. Outside. In the alley. Wu Zeqing's face was covered with sweat from pulling Zhong Yi away from the argument. She did not usually exercise much and did not have much strength either, so having to pull Zhong Yi out of the house took a big toll on her. Oh, you. Wu Zeqing shook her head and smiled. Zhong Yi harumphed, Old Wu, it's not that I'm not giving you face today. But if your dad wants to accuse me of having a questionable character, I won't take that lying down. Wu Zeqing changed the topic. Since when did you know how to play Go? Zhong Yi said, I've always known how to. You can even beat my dad? Wu Zeqing smiled and said, although, he really wasn't being serious today either. He started that game very casually and allowed you to gain an advantage. It was only because of that that you managed to narrowly beat him. Zhong Yi said, even if your dad got serious, I still won't lose. Wu Zeqing said, that would have to be under the condition of having no handicaps. She took his hand. Let's go. We didn't even have a proper meal. When we get back, I'll cook for you. After that, let's play a round of go as well. You can play too? I've been playing ever since I was seven years old. How good are you? SOSO, I guess. A short distance away in the house. 
Li Qingqing started complaining to her husband, Look at you. Why did you have to argue with the children? It was him who started it first. Wu Changhe sat down and took a sip of tea. He was still quite fired up from earlier. How dare he pretend to be an amateur in front of me? He was too devious. Li Qingqing laughed and said, I saw his skill just now too. Even if you had been serious and did not give him a handicap, you might not necessarily beat him. Ziqing's boyfriend this time is really something. He's just as legendary as they reported in the newspapers. He's such an astonishing person. I just wonder why his go skill is so advanced. Logically, it's not something that can be practiced with just one or two years of play. As a celebrity, where does he find time to practice go? But I heard that the mathematical conjecture proof that he proposed has almost been verified. He should be the greatest mathematician in the country now, and also a globally recognized world class mathematician. With the interlinked relationship between Go and Math One, it's still within reason that he can play so well. This little Zhong is really such a marvel. It's no wonder that our Ziqing, who usually sets her sights really high, would like him. I heard that he also got into singing a while ago. I think he even became the champion? And he's already a superstar in the country? It seems like he's really good at everything. Wu Changhe stared at her. Did you get duped by him too? He's not good. Not even close. Li Qingqin said, All right, all right, he's not good. You're the best, ha ha. This meeting today was truly too funny. Thinking about it, Li Qingqin couldn't help but find it funny. How could there be such a huge coincidence in the world? Chapter 1100 The Internet Go Server. The next day. Early in the morning, six or seven o'clock. At home, John Yi's mother was already awake while his father was still sleeping. Mom, I'm going out. Where are you going now? I have some serious business to attend to. It was past eight when you got home last night. Come back earlier tonight. Got it. You don't have much to do at work anyway, so why are you still always going out every day? John Yi thought to himself how he really had serious business to handle. This was a matter concerning his marriage. Outside Old Wu's villa. John Yi had driven over and used the key to open the door. He changed into his slippers with familiarity and placed the still warm breakfast onto the dining table. He looked up the staircase and called out twice. No one responded. She was probably still asleep. He headed upstairs and opened the door to Old Wu's bedroom. A whiff of perfume greeted him as he stepped into the room. The room was very clean and tidy. Even the clothes Old Wu had taken off had been carefully folded and stacked before being placed at the side. The topmost piece was a nude bra, with a skirt and pale pantyhose placed beside it. These were what Old Wu had been wearing last night. Lying in bed under her blanket, Wu Ziqing's eyes were closed. Her sleep posture was very beautiful and elegant. A woman's upbringing and her family environment could sometimes be seen from their sleeping posture. Some women might look very elegant during the day. But once asleep, their true colors would be revealed by their sprawled out legs and snores. However, Old Wu's gentleness was something that was etched deep into her bones. She looked especially nice and ladylike even while she was sleeping. Old Wu. Old Wu. H.M. Wake up. Wu Ziqing was finally awake. Zhong Yi smiled and said, it's past seven. Wu Ziqing covered her mouth and yawned a few times, then said with a slight smile, you're here. Yeah, I bought breakfast. Come downstairs and eat. Zhong Yi said, after you're done eating, help me call your parents. I'll go over during the day since your dad is waiting for me. Wu Ziqing laughed and said, you're still thinking about that. Zhong Yi said, of course. Your dad scheduled a match with me, I must definitely show up. He already said that if I don't go, I'll be a whelp. So of course I'm still thinking about it. Wu Ziqing said, all right, I understand. I'll send you over later. Don't you need to work? Zhong Yi was taken aback. Wu Ziqing smiled. I'll take the day off, I guess. I'll be worried if you go there alone. If you start arguing with my dad again, my mom won't be able to hold off the two of you for sure. 
Zhong Yi harumphed, if I can't argue, I will let my skill speak for itself. If I lose, he can scold me or beat me up however he wants. But if I win, your dad will have to take back his words about my character being questionable. Just ask around. Who wouldn't give a thumbs up when they hear the mention of the name Zhong Yi? Why did my character even get called into question? Right, a thumbs up. Wu Ziqing pulled aside the blanket and had a slow laugh as she slowly moved her slender legs off the side of the bed. She put on her slippers and got up. Go eat breakfast first. I need to wash up. Zhong Yi urged, quick, old Wu. I can't wait any longer. Wu Ziqing said, ha ha, I understand. Or why don't you make the call first, Zhong Yi said impatiently. Then we can head over right after breakfast. Wu Ziqing had no response. After eating. Wu Ziqing called her parents' house. At old Wu's parents' house. The telephone in the living room rang. Li Qingqin and Wu Changhe were both not fond of sleeping in. Although they were retired, they still usually got up quite early. Li Qingqin was already making breakfast. Hello? Li Qingqin answered the call. Wu Ziqing said, Mom, you're up? Li Qingqin said, Ziqing, yes. I'm making breakfast right now. Is dad around? He is. What's the matter? Zhong Yi came over to my place and insists that he wants to go over today. Didn't dad arrange for them to play another match? He insists on showing up. Eh? I'll have to check with your dad about that first. Li Qingqin walked into the courtyard. Wu Changhe was doing some stretching and exercises. Who called? Li Qingqin smiled and said, Our daughter. She says that little Zhong wants to come over. Wu Changhe's expression sank. What does he want to come here for? Didn't the two of you arrange to play another match today? Li Qingqin didn't know how to react. You said that you would give him a handicap of 190 stones, and he said that he would give you a handicap of 200 stones. At this, Wu Changhe gave a sneer and said, Don't let him come over. I won't see him. Li Qingqin said, but didn't you both arrange a meeting? I just don't like seeing him. I can't be bothered to play go with him. Wu Changhe turned around and continued exercising. Li Qingqin smacked her lips. You said that whoever didn't show up would be a whelp. Wu Changhe said coldly, he thinks that he can play against me with that skill of his. He's still way off. Perhaps if he trains another 20 years in his next life, he could stand a chance playing me. Li Qingqin didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Changhe, are you afraid that you'll lose another match to him and won't be able to show your face around? When she said that, Wu Changhe laughed on end. Me? Lose? I'd lose to him? Ari, Li Qingqin, why are you so funny today? I'm not going to play him for the sake of our daughter, do you understand? Can't you see? If I were to get serious, I could beat him even with my eyes closed. Me? Afraid to lose? Ha 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 ha. She went back into the living room. Li Qingqin conveyed the message exactly as it was said. Wu Ziqing was amused. These two, Ari. Li Qingqin also said with a laugh, these two grown men have really similar tempers. They're both feisty and want to save face for themselves. Zhong Yi was nearby listening to the conversation. His ears perked up and he got so close to old Wu that his cheek was almost touching hers. Then he whispered, ask about me, ask about me. Wu Ziqing laughed and said, Mom, what do you think of little Yi? My view? Li Qingqin thought about it before answering, I think he should be quite all right. I rather like him as he is quite smart, is knowledgeable, and speaks what he feels. Ha ha. Zhong Yi was touched by this. His mother-in-law was the best. Just look at how insightful she was. What about that future father-in-law of his? Ari, how can there be such a big difference when it comes to comparing the two of them? The call ended. Wu Ziqing said, I don't think it will be a problem with my mother. She seems pretty satisfied with you. But it should be quite troublesome with regards to my dad. All right, let's just rest well at home today. You won't be needing to go to my parents' place since my dad does not want to see you. He's afraid that he'll lose to me. 
Wu Zixing and Li Qingqing probably still did not quite understand it. After all, their Go skills were limited and they were not great at the game. But Zhang Yi understood quite well. He was sure that Wu Changhe also knew very well that he was trying to avoid Zhang Yi so that he wouldn't need to play him. Zhang Yi suddenly asked, That's right. Old Wu, does your dad usually play Go online? Wu Zixing said, Yes. He doesn't go to the Go club often since the skill there isn't high and the people there are not able to play against him. He usually only plays against those disciples of his or the other elite Go players who have retired like him. Besides that, he also goes online to search for an opponent to play against. With the internet so advanced nowadays, the internet Go servers are expanding their user base. Many of our domestic professional Go players, and even those from Japan and Korea, go online to search for opponents to play against. Which server does he play on? It's called the online Go server one. And what is his username? Wu Changhe, his real name. All right, I got it. Why are you asking? It's nothing. I was just asking out of curiosity. You want to avoid me? Then I will search you out. Zhong Yi was already as good as in a fight with Wu Changhe now. Can support us completed novel house in link below clip. Thank you for coming and love the sharing story.